Superman welcomed the ASA to his hometown of Metropolis, Illinois with bright sunshine and plenty of heat and humidity. Shooting conditions were ideal in the open forest of the Mermit Lake State Conservation Area during both days of qualifications for the four pro classes. Now it's time to break out into the open as the Pro Pressure Point shootdowns head to the historic grounds of Fort Massac State Park. Who will shine on the banks of the mighty Ohio River and take home the title Matthews Pro-Am champion? Let's find out right now. All right, welcome everybody to the Matthews Pro-Am here for the Pro Pressure Point shootdowns at Fort Massac State Park. We are at the fifth stop on the 2022 ASA Tour. You can see there where we have been. There we are, one from the bottom in Metropolis, Illinois. Next up, we've got the big one, the McKenzie Classic, Coleman, Alabama at the end of July. But earlier this month, we were at the True Ball Black Eagle in London, Kentucky, and that was an incredible shoot down. Let's relive some of those moments. No guarantees. The guy leading doesn't necessarily come out the winner, doesn't come out on top, and there's some hungry shooters out there. All right, Darren, here we go. The big show kicked Next. off with a shocker Next as Cara Kelly found herself four points behind Sharon Wallace heading into the final arrow. Cara with eight, Sharon with a 12. They're currently tied now. She had only one play, hit the 14 on a long coyote and forced Wallace to hit nothing lower than a 10. Oh, gosh, that's so close. Oh. Here it comes. Now. There yeah, it is. There it is. <laughs> Cara did her part while Wallace's distance judgment was just a bit hot, causing her arrow to climb high into the eight ring, giving Cara her fourth win in her last seven trips to London. I'm thrilled. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it happened. I knew that I had to 14 it to even have a chance, and because we were four points apart, and I knew she had me on bonus ring, so it was kind of an all or nothing. He has been shooting in the semi-pro class from 2009 until this year. This is wow. his first year in the pro class. Good for him, and he came in leading. In the senior pro shoot down, Great House learned how difficult it is to hold on to a lead with some of the world's best archers licking at your heels. Oh, he got Smoked it. it. Tim Gillingham did what the hammer does when the game is on the line and nailed some impressive bonus rings to rise to the top and take his third victory of the 2022 season. Yeah, it's, it's always kind of scary when you come out of the woods and out in this open field. And, and kind of an anomaly I have with this, this eye surgery I had is when I look into the sun like that, I get a lot of glare. And so I have a very difficult time picking out detail on the animals. So, you know, and when Jeff shot that 14 and the shoot off just right out of the gate, I was kind of planning on shooting 14 on that hyena. I was fortunate enough to actually hit it, and that kind of was the, the catalyst that kind of, you know, pushed me over the top. Levi Morgan is back on top of his game. Levi Morgan worked the open pro shoot down to perfection, taking just the right amount of risk to hold off the talented field chasing him and added another title to his pile of London victories while also collecting his first win of the 2022 season. But something about this place I've always loved. Um, I think it's because it reminds me of where I grew up in the mountains of Western North Carolina. And I said, I'm just gonna keep playing it smart and it worked out. You know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. This game's been good to me over the years and it's been a, a heck of a weekend, a heck of a year. I've been super blessed, so I'm pumped to be back. But you can't deny that when he's on, he is hard to beat. He's almost unbeatable when he's got things clicking. For the final shoot down of the evening, let's be honest. No one came within a whisper of Kyle Douglas. He didn't even need to shoot the last arrow to take the win. But he did. Is Tim talking him into a 14? Oh, he got it. <laughs> and he smacked the 14 to the crowd's delight. Yeah, I mean, you can't let up with these guys, even with a little bit of a lead going. I was going to have a gun for him and maybe shoot some 14s, but uh, I ended up hitting enough 12s. I didn't need a gun for any 14s, so I'll take that. Welcome everybody to Fort Massac on the banks of the Ohio River here in Metropolis, Illinois. And welcome everyone to the Competition Archery Media broadcast booth. 
I'm PJ Riley sitting alongside Elite Pro Darren Christianberry. And Darren, we should tell the folks you and I are both wearing sunglasses because in about 30 seconds we're going to be blasted by this sunlight here. Yeah, the sun's <laughs> going to be hitting us right in the face. And I tell you, we've been so lucky with the weather this year at all the AS events. We travel all around and we've dodged rain, we've dodged storms. Today, this weekend, it's been really hot. And it's 96 degrees in my truck a little while ago when I was driving over here. But Illinois is usually perfect shooting conditions. It's flat, there's low wind. Other than the heat, it's as good of shooting conditions as you can ask for, and the scores show it this weekend. This is our third time here shooting at Fat Fort Massac, and we were talking. I was talking to Dan McCarthy earlier, and he was saying this is the first time that the weather has been decent. It was raining the first time, mm -hmm. windy the last time. We've got excellent conditions here for this afternoon. Other than the heat, it's perfect. <laughs> so ASA President Mike Tyrell, he is going to tell us all about the Matthews Pro-Am this weekend. There's a lot more that goes into it than just the shoot down. Let's go to Mike so he can tell us all about it. What's that? Dinero. Hell yeah. Money. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're at Mermet Lake in near Metropolis, Illinois, the home of Superman. We've been coming here since 1997, so it's our 25th year. Uh, the site has always been a fun one for everybody. It's a relatively level piece of ground, a lot of hardwoods, a lot of dark and light, a lot of the things that make it challenging. It's, the Mat it's gonna be the Matthews Pro-Am. They've been a longtime sponsor. They've been, they like this event because it's nearer to their, their home in Wisconsin. So they bring in a big crew and a big time, and so we're gonna do a lot of fun things with the Matthews crew this weekend. And hold pressure and make sure you're aiming. Excellent shot. Excellent shot. That's the best shot you made all day. When you come to Metropolis, the big attraction is a, a large, I think it's an 18 or 20 foot statue of Superman. And it's sitting right outside the courthouse. And it's a big area, you can go in there and take your picture with him. They got all kinds of shops around it that sell all kinds of memorabilia. And it's kind of an old town home feel. It's like you get, went back in the 1950s and kind of like the original Superman you know, TV show. And it's kind of nice to just kind of walk around and see these shops and get your, this is the home of Dippin' Dots. In this weather, Superman, Dippin' Dots, you gotta be good to go. When we first came here in 1997, we had 10 ranges. Uh, we've since expanded it to 14 ranges. Uh, the, obviously, they got acreage everywhere. This is a, a preservation site, a fish and game facility. Uh, so the site allowed us to do that. So now we're up to 14 full ranges, a 40 target practice range, uh, and a GPO known program. So we got uh, 17 20 target ranges, and then we got, so again, around 400 targets being set this week. The guys here that work for Illinois Department of the, uh, the De Illinois Department, those guys are amazing. They'll be out there with ice chests, I mean, massive ice chests filled with water, ice down, cold, ready to be served. And they'll be handing out ice water to everybody. They'll also have coolers out there for the cooling towels. And I mean, they really do take care of the shooters in the, in the best way possible. And the food concessions are always good here. And, and we now have the pro shoot down overlooking the Ohio River at Fort Massey, which was actually from the 1700s. It's got a lot of history. It's got a lot of tradition. Uh, and it's got a lot of excitement when those guys get out there and start shooting. The one thing about ASA that I'm truly proud about is that this is an open competition for everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean six-year-old kids and 60-year-old kids. And we have classes for seniors, super seniors, senior masters. We have women's classes that start from the beginning, go all the way to the pro women's classes, and classes that start maybe as far as 30 yards. We shoot known distance or unknown distance, pick your poison. Uh, so the entire facility and all the, the everything we do is really designed to accommodate every age group and every skill level. Everybody has their own range. They're all shooting with their own people. You're not shooting with a guy back behind you shooting at 50 yards while you're shooting at 30. Everybody's shooting at 30. So it's completely safe. It's a great environment for, I'm sure from the films they've seen on, on cam, you can see that it's safe that you can walk right down the middle of the range and you can see everybody, you can see what's going on. If you got children out there, you can stay with them and not have a problem with that. Um, so we feel we've, we've created a very, very family-friendly environment. It moves very quickly. When you're on a range, if you're shooting in a 30-yard known distance class, you'll be off the range in two and a half hours. So it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not a beat down, it's not a hard day. Uh, you're in groups of fours and fives and you're just moving along having a good time. 
Shoot of the year is the, the overall best combined score of the year. So you take your best scores, your, your four best pro-ams, your score from the classic, add that together, whoever has the most points is shoot of the year. So we have first prize, second prize, third prize. Uh, typically, the, the manufacturers will be paying out, I think the last time Matthews even wrote a check for twenty or $30,000. So there's a lot to be, a lot of bragging rights and a lot of tax problems that go with Shooter of the Year. And the Shooter of the Year pro program is hot right now. We've got four scores posted for everybody. After this event, they get to drop their lowest score. And after that, we'll see exactly what the standings are going to be for Shooter of the Year. But All right, Darren, so we're going to get started here shortly with the Pro Pressure Point shoot downs, but we wanted to take a moment to remember an icon of the ASA, mm -hmm. Milton Rousey. He passed away last week at the age of 67. He's one of the last original guys who's been with the ASA since it started. You knew him better than I. Yeah, he was he was a staple here at the ASA. He was one of the range officials, and Milton was just kind of a, a big, stalky guy, <laughs> big smile on his face. He, he was a man of few words, but when he spoke, you listened. You know, <laughs> yeah. you, you knew not to disrespect Milton, and Milton deserved respect. So uh, he'll be missed out here. Uh, our deepest condolences to his whole family. Um, Milton was just a good dude, and we'll miss seeing him out here for sure. For sure. He was a range official, and we're talking going back to the early 1990s of ASA. So yeah. we're talking, you know, 30 years that Milton was out here. And, and like you said, I, I didn't know him well, but I always knew when I saw him out there on the range. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't argue with Milton. No. You know, if there was something that you had to question out there, if you went to Milton with the question, you just took his answer and ran with it. So, <laughs> yeah, no, Milton was a good dude, and he'll be sorely missed out here. We will definitely miss. Milton Rousey. Let's go out to the third member of our team, Nathan Brooks. He's going to tell us about ASA scoring. So the ASA has been at this game for a long time. To my recollection, 1993. And with just a few changes along the way, the scoring has basically been the same ever since the inception. So we have a Delta McKenzie target here. This is a turkey. And this is pretty challenging for the sim simple fact that there's just very little distance from the bottom of this 10 ring to where the eight ring is at. So for these guys judging yardage, if they misjudge this, uh, shooting at this 12 ring, about a yard to yard and a half, that's gonna be a five. So it's a very risky challenge shot for them to make at this 12. So anywhere in this animal is five points. Anywhere inside this ring is eight points. This ring here, which is about four inches, that's 10 points. This bottom 12 is um, normally in play. They don't have to call that one, but they do have to call for the upper 12. So that is an option and you'll see that. And this ring up here, this is the one everybody wants. It's 14 points. And this only comes into play here on these final five or six targets that these archers will be shooting. And this has the most risk, but the most reward. Obviously, if they miss, it's an eight or a five, but if you hit it, it's 14 points and a quick advancement right to the top of the podium. All right, Darren, Nathan ran down the scores there. And f folks, we have a horse race here tonight. This is gonna be an exciting series of shoot downs. We've never seen the scores this close. Those 14s will be in play. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here at Fort Massick to get things started with Women's Pro.
Can I call upper? Okay. Can I get an umbrella, please? back everybody Darren Christian Berry there's our women's pro leaderboard what are we looking at it's a pretty big spread from first to fifth but as we've seen in the past these things aren't over until we've shot all five or six arrows Kaylee Johnston 12 up for the weekend which is a phenomenal score uh, Emily McCarthy 408 she's shooting great Aaron McGlattery coming off a win last weekend at an IBO Sharon Wallace is always uh, uh, she always has a chance of winning these things. Caitlin Boardwell made the cut there with a 393. So they're going to shoot five or six arrows and see who's going to win this thing. All right, let's get to the action. We're going to go to Nathan Brooks to bring out our archers. All right, let's get started things this afternoon. All right, in your first uh, round of shooting this afternoon, we got the women's pro class. And in fifth place... From Tully, New York, shooting for Hoyt, Caitlin Boardwell. And in fourth place, all the way from Marston, Saskatchewan, Canada. Let's try that again. How about in fourth place from Townville, South Carolina, shooting for PSE, Sharon Wallace. All right, now we'll do this again. And in third place from Marston, Saskatchewan, that's in Canada, for those of you that don't know, Miss Erin McGlattery, shooting for Hoyt. And in second place from Mozika, Wisconsin, shooting for Matthews, Emily McCarthy. And your number one qualifier from Dublin, Georgia, Shooting for Matthews, Kaylee Johnston. All right, Darren, so for the uninitiated, let's talk about this class. First off, we call this unknown. Mm -hmm. The women are, they've had a judging period. The, the other classes as well, they get a 10 minute period to look at the targets that they're gonna shoot. They have a little card that they write some numbers down and they're identifying each target and they're guessing the distance. They're figuring out with detail, whatever method that they use, how far these targets are, then they're gonna set their sight, shoot one arrow per target. If we have anyone within 10 points of the leader after five, we will shoot a sixth and final arrow to decide who gets first, second, third, fourth, fifth. That's kind of a throwback to the days of where, to bow hunting, um, where we didn't have range fighters. Mm -hmm. So you had to judge that distance to the animal, and mm -hmm. that's kind of what they're imitating here. And folks, that is a skill. It is, it is. You're gonna see these little rings. Of course, Nathan showed you a minute ago how small these rings are. They're about the size of a 50 cent piece. And these targets are gonna be up to a max distance of about 50 yards, which is half of a football field. So imagine shooting at a 50 cent piece that you really can't see at the distance of half of a football field. So and they will hit these rings. So we're in for a good show tonight. There's a good look at Katie Boardwell from New York. She looked like a 10 there for her on that wolf. There's a good look at Sharon. She holds so steady, shoots so good. She's an upper 12 shooter, so I'm assuming that's her arrow yep. we're looking at right there. And that's the longest target out there, I believe. There's that's Aaron right there. Bailey. Good look over her shoulder on that turkey. We're going to get our Johnson scores here. First up is going to be Kaylee Johnston, who just crushed it this weekend. She said she did not leave the eight ring today. Oh, or ten ring, excuse that's me. That's so she good for her. Class, and look at that. Oh, she did call upper, however. Yeah. So that's a ten. I've got a big TV block in my view, so I won't be able to tell <laughs> when the archers are shooting at uppers or not. So we may get some things wrong here. <laughs> they have an orange cone that they put out front, and I can just see the top of it. Good There's look, Emily. Emily. Next. Emily's got such a good strong shot. I brag on her every time, but she's aiming and shooting so well. Emily won this event last year in some crazy wind. Everybody was crumbling and falling apart, and she shot uh, four, four fives and a t uh, four tens and a twelve yeah. to take the victory. And for Aaron, 
good 10 there for Aaron. I think yeah, it was a 10 for Kaylee there at the front. I'm going to try to do some it was. here and yep. keep up. So it puts her to 422. Aaron will go to a 418. No, Emily, Emily will go to a 4. See, I've got it wrong already, PJ. Aaron's a 410. <laughs> now, this target, you can see that, Darren. They went down a hill from the shooter's perspective. Mm -hmm. They don't know how far over the crest of that hill that yeah, target they've, is. They've hidden the feet, so it's it's not an easy target. And that was Sharon on that long deer with a 10. That's a great arrow there. That is a long one. I don't think anyone hit any rings. I think everyone stayed in the 10 ring. Yep. Which we consider that to be par. That's par. Ten. Yep. Okay. Oh, she did she call shoot up. Her. I nice. spoke too soon. Puts her to 405. So she gained a couple of points right there. Yeah, just so if you folks at home don't know, we shoot 40 targets on the weekend. If you shot 40 tens, you'd have 400 points. So when you see one with a 412, they've hit 12 the bonus rings throughout the weekend. So we call that 12 up Kayla, for, for Kaylee. Ready. She came in at 412. So even par would be 10s through 40 targets, 400 points, and we call it up or down. So 12 up would be a 412. Three down would be a 397, which is what you see Sharon coming in at. So that's some of the math that's we talk about time. when we, some of the lingo we talk about when we right. talk about these Start archery tournaments. Now. So I will say, we saw a look uh, from the side of Katie Boardwell on target one, and the same for target five. There are trees blocking, half mm. partially blocking the targets. So it's a challenging shot. They don't have an open look at it. It's not covering the vitals that they're shooting at, but it is blocking their view of the whole animal. There's Emily there. We just saw Aaron shoot a shot. Emily's holding so good. She's solid. Good, strong break. That oh, arrow a looks a low. little low. That turkey. Yeah, there's Katie Boardwell. And again, if you can imagine from her perspective, it's a little bit left of there. Oh, she, she went, went for the 14. 14. Good for her. She came in in fifth. She has. She can't Why finish not? any worse than fifth, so yep. she's trying to make her move. Bravo, Katie. She's shooting an Easton Pro Comp, a little arrow too. Yeah. Probably for some extra speed. Katie's not Bye. a real for big Taylor. gal, so... Smaller arrows, lighter arrows will get a little faster set up. Her draw length is going to be like considerably co shorter mm -hmm. compared to Aaron to McLattery, tall. who's taller and yeah. has longer arms. But they have to be hit to be rewarded. A 10. Just Kaylee, a good 10, 10 for Kaylee. Moves her to 432, if my math is correct. She just kind of needs to play the game and mm -hmm. see what happens, Not go for, not be too risky. She said that's what she did today out on the course. Yeah, the other ladies have to shoot some rings to catch her. If Kaylee right, keeps it in a 10 ring, these 14. girls have to shoot at least two 12s to catch her. But the 14 is in play. It doesn't take long to make big moves if they shoot at that 14. Eight for Emily McCarthy on that turkey, which is the that's shortest now, target, which is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. She's got the distance a little bit off there. Yeah, you can see the guys walking going down, that down hill. the hill. Mm -hmm. Ten. Ten. That's a great. That's a great score right Absolutely. there. We're going to see some probably less than tens on that target before the day's over. That's just disappointing. I guys thought that would fool them. <laughs> Mike Tyrell saying, lamenting that it's not fooling more archers, right. but they're happy and with those tens. Sharon typically shoots at uppers, and that is really not close to that lower 12. I don't know if she called it or she, not. I don't see the cone she out. Made, yeah, yeah, there she it is. she did 12 it. She's usually an upper shooter, but she's going to take that to a 419 now. So she's within one point of Aaron in third. And we should mention, why is that a big deal? I mean, this isn't just for medals. There's some money oh, on the line here. Yeah, there's and some good money. Thousands of dollars that these ladies are shooting for out there. The the companies that they shoot for, the bow companies that sponsor them, if they get a first, second, or third place finish, they get contingency checks. So they're not just shooting for prize money for the tournament. They get sponsor contingency arrows, veins, releases, sights, bow companies. That Everybody out here, all these sponsors right, pay these archers if they get on the podium. So it's a substantial now. amount of money that everyone's shooting for. There's a good look at Kaylee. Leader. Kaylee's from Dublin, Georgia. I want to give a shout out to Randy Dennis. Randy's known Kaylee since she was little bitty. Randy has fought some health issues, had a stroke. He's not able to compete with us anymore, but he's watching every broadcast. We text back and forth. So, hey, Randy, hope you're watching again. Hope you're doing well. Absolutely. 
That is the wolf, and that is Aaron McLattery. Shoot, she is high upper, on that. Upper, yeah. Aaron likes to shoot those upper 12s. So Sharon had a letdown, pushing. She still got 23 seconds Sharon, on the clock. Sharon might try to 14 this target. I don't know the distance, but she's going to try to make a move here. I would say. She went for the 12. Oh, that's close. Shooting at another lower. Hmm. She's changed her game plan. I'm yeah. I'm interested to see why. Good look at Emily. Strong. Oh, she oh, hit low. Go. There yeah. we go. I said we'd see All some right. less Sharon than 10s on that target. And moments later, there Tied you are. Bonus rings, but trailing by 13 oh, points. Wow. That's Katie so Johnson. close. That is. All right, Darren. We talk about it every time. Let's talk about pulling the line. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know if this one did or not, but. Pulling the line means these foams are pli these, these targets, the foam is pliable. It will stretch. It will bend when the arrow penetrates the target. It'll pull but it has to touch the arrow. So you can distort the line, but if that line is not touching the arrow, you do not get the higher score. So it has to touch. And that line is not necessarily defined like mm -hmm. you would see on a you know typical bullseye. Target. Yeah, and sometimes looking at it from this angle, it looks, oh, it could be out, oh, it could be in. And if you look down above or from below, you see a different yeah. view if it may have that radius broken. So. They're looking long and hard at this the, one. The, so camera view, the camera views are just, that's a really close arrow. Ten for Sharon. There it is, 10. 10 uh, points, Mike wow. Tyrell says. 10 so for Sharon, close. 429, and I think Aaron shot an eight over there, so Sharon will yeah. jump into third place after this arrow. That's right. a good look at Katie. Oh, she <laughs> went for that 14. Good and for her. And she got it. 14. That's awesome. Good for her. <laughs> She's judging really good, and that's good to see. Caitlin, you're actually above 10 points per target, but you might want to find a different way to do it this time. <laughs> That's 424. 12, 5, 14. I'm looking forward to the next one, huh? All right. So Kelly she has Johnson a 12, a 5, and a 14. <laughs> Holding on to a six-point lead now over Emma McCarthy. A solid 10 for her. That was Kaylee with a 10. Yep. 442. Now Kaylee's going to be shooting that really long deer coming up here next. Yeah. This one definitely fooled Emily mm -hmm. on the distance. That's going to move her to a 431. So second place is yeah. really up for grabs right Five. now. For Emily McCarthy. So much about judging, Darren, is using the target to see it. Mm -hmm. If you can't wow. see it all, yep. that messes with your it, it depth makes perception. A big diff yeah, because especially if, if these ladies or whoever's judging, are there, if they're ground judges, if they need to see the ground yeah, all the way to the feet feet of the target, you have no idea from that roadway to how far. It could be three yards. It could be seven yards. So if you get four yards off, that's four inches at 40 yards. So that was an eight for Aaron there, 428. All right, this is tight now. It is. Other than Kaylee. Kaylee's she's 42. still holding her. Second place. Yeah, she's got an 11 point lead now over second place. So that's pretty substantial with two targets to go. And we should mention if no one is within 10 points of her mm -hmm. for the after the fifth arrow, then it's over. It'll be over. That's correct. Anyone who is within 10 points will go to a sixth there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Kaylee would love to just <laughs> call it good after five and not have to worry about anybody catching her. Yes. There's a good look at Kaylee. She's such a good archer. She's such a good yardage judger. And she's a full-time nurse. She doesn't do this full-time. I always love to call attention to that because mm -hmm. if you know nurses, you know she's busy. So she's not spending all her time practicing. Good strong shot. Oh man, that's right be there close at that, to that 10, ten line. There's a good look at Aaron. Aaron works so hard at this game. There's Paige Pierce holding the umbrella for her, one of the best in the world at various types of archery. She competes out here in a known distance uh, division. Emily must have let down. She's coming to full draw now. Watch the end of that stabilizer. How steady she holds. 23 seconds. Barely moving. Such a good shooter. I see the end of it, but I think that's over the 12. She's been teaching her husband a lot of a lot of good things too. Her husband's Dan McCarthy. She's been working with him. Gets him on the podium. Gets him on the podium once in a while. We will see Dan here in a little bit in the Open Pro. First up, let's see how Aaron McGlattery, solid 10. 438. For Miss Aaron. Aaron McGlattery, booster to 438. 
There's Aaron talking to Paige Pierce. I got to shoot some practice arrows with Aaron this week, and she's tough. She is a good archer. Good 10 for Sharon there, 439. So we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. They've shot Sharon four is, now. Right now we have a program shooter of the year that Mike Tyrell talked about earlier. Yeah, and Sharon you. is the leader in this class, and she has a pretty substantial lead. Mm -hmm. I believe it was about 20 points. Looky there. Caitlin Boardwell back hey. to back 14s. She's afraid of oh, nothing. She just jumped into a tie for third. Next is that right? Nope. 438. That's 439. We need to see what Emily did. Yeah, let's see what Emily did. If that's an eight, Katie and Sharon would be tied for third right now. For Kaylee? This is Kaylee. An eight. An eight for Kaylee. Fifty. We'll have to do some math here, PJ. Yeah. See where we're at. I believe and Emily shot a ten here. here. Currently at 431. Yep. And so Sharon's going to be in third, but man, right behind them, Aaron McBattery and Katie Boardwell. Sure. Aaron and Katie are tied for fourth now. Yeah. So this is a big arrow here. Aaron's going to, I believe, she's going to shoot the hyena. Is that target number two? Yeah, Sharon's going to go to the turkey. Oh, Katie Boardwell's on the long one. Mm -hmm. She's on that deer. This is interesting. This guy, I mean, we were looking at the yeah. beginning of how tight it was, but this is, or how open it was. It's tight race yeah. now, barring, other than first place. Barring a disaster for Kaylee on the wolf, which is not too bad. She's she's in really good in a really good position to win this, but second and third are still wide open. Right. We'll start your one minute. But this is, the, this is the last arrow. If no one's yeah. within 10 of Kaylee, we won't shoot a final arrow. And right, right now, now, Emily, Emily. The only, is the only one. Kaylee called upper, I believe, and hit a low 10. There's a good look at Katie. She's shooting this long deer. With she needs something on this one. Coming off back-to-back -back 14s. Long hold there. Good, strong oh. shot. She may have 12 that. Are you kidding me? I That's her brother. Did. Her brother Glenn, brother says, Glenn yeah. is with her. Now Sharon's heard the excitement. She yeah. may change her big deep breath. Wow. Sharon's on this turkey, so she may A try to 14 this thing. Bonus ring on the longest target. Are you kidding me? So Katie would make the final arrow if that's a 12. Wait, that's in the 14, the dirt, the deer. Oh my gosh, I thought she just shot up the 12. So did I, that's up All in right. the... the famous buzzer beaters. And did Sharon 14 uh, the turkey? She, I think she did. I didn't think this shoot off was gonna be that exciting, <laughs> Man, but I, it's turned out to be pretty good. There's a good look at Kaylee crazy. down that wolf. So she's got a 10 for sure there on that wolf. So let's do some math here, let's see where we're at. Emily's up first, that's a 10 for her. All right. 451. 451. 451. Next, Aaron McGlattery. Aaron McGlattery. Shooting the hyena. Aaron, Aaron needs a bonus ring here to ten move on. She's a 10. 448. Yeah. 448. 448. So she will not make the final arrow. I'll bet you Sharon was aiming at a 12 and shifted yep. off. And when they heard, when the crowd went, uh, started making noise for Caitlin's arrow, she changed her play. Oh, no doubt. It. Yes. Wow. That's a 453, if my math is correct. Wow. That's a big that arrow. Will never hurt your card. For Caitlin Boardwell. <laughs> Kate, if Katie hits this one, this would be three 14s in a row. <laughs> and came into the shoot down in fifth. In fifth. Shot a 12 of five and then three 14s in a row. What's she got? Come on. Oh, Good that's grief. inside out. That's Are awesome. Are you kidding me? Four, five, two. Pro shoot down without scoring a single ten. So with Emily shooting the ten, she'd still moved into third place. Yep. So, wow. 
So Erin came in in third, and she's going to go into fifth and not make the final arrow, I believe, if my math is correct. It's a 10 for Kaylee, 460. So anyone within 10, anyone 450 or better will shoot the final arrow. That's everybody except Erin McLeod. Erin's going to end up in fifth. In third place is Caitlin Bordwell at 452. Wow. I don't really know what to say. At that was. <laughs> is Emily McCarthy, who will also be in the shoot down at 451 and 10 bonus rings. And Erin McGlattery, thank you very much. At 448 and 7, she will not be in the arrow, but let's give them all a round of applause. Congratulations. Man. I mean, we want to. Give recognition to Kaylee Johnson. She did what she needed to do to yes. hold on her lead, and she's got a, a nice seven-point lead over Sharon Wallace. Mm -hmm. But the folks behind her did what they needed to do to put the pressure on her. Yeah, Kaylee's in a good position here. We can do some math. If Kaylee, if anyone behind her shoots, so second place is Sharon Wallace. She shoots a 14. That puts her at a 467. Kaylee would just need to shoot an 8 to win this tournament. Right. That's a really good position to be in right here. Yeah. So they are bringing out a new target. It looks like they're getting ready to set up a leopard, as you can see right there. Scott's going to find him a new distance. Scott Parrott is setting our distance. He's got a range finder, so he knows how far it is. And he did move them up in front of the shooting line. So this is about even with the hyena, whatever distance that was. And it's about two or three steps, mm -hmm. three or four steps in front of the shooting line. So they're going to have a pretty good idea how far this is. So this is a race for second and third yeah. right here. That distance is not going to be hard for Kaylee to get an eight on. It's really not. But for these girls to decide who gets second and third, yeah. shoot at the 12, shoot at the 14. And Emily, wow. Emily's going to get a shoot first here. She's at the 451, so she'll get the first arrow. Then it'll be Caitlin Boardwell. Sharon's going to know what she has to do. And then, like we said before, even if these girls shoot 14s, Kaylee's going to need an eight to win this tournament. How many times have we seen Sharon Wallace? Well, just in the last tournament, she got beaten by one where, she, mm -hmm. you know, she got fooled on an extra bonus ring. But we've seen her do things like that last shot where she had to shoot a 14 and hit it. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to brag on Katie Boardwell. <laughs> How about it? I mean, That's Kate, what I was saying. Katie's a great archer. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But Katie, to me... I don't know her as a yardage judger. You right. know, I, I don't consider her like, okay, she's an unknown 3D shooter. I wouldn't give her that title. Right. For her to step out there and do what she did, pretty darn good shoot. Absolutely. She did spend, so there was a time when she came out and she actually shot known pro, which is all men currently. It mm -hmm. is an open class. Anybody can be in it, but there were no women in it. She came out and tried it, tested yeah. the waters. And we'll see the known pros later. Known we pro will, yeah. means they're using a range finder. They will know the distance to these. They click it with a range finder. They set their sight for exactly what the distance is. Yeah. Katie competed with those guys for a while. So she's played in all avenues or, you know, experimented with everything out here. But for her to hit a 12, you know, ah, shoot at a 14, got a 5, no big deal. But then finish with three in a row, and especially that longest deer. Unbelievable. I'm Good for her. Yeah. Crazy Emily good. up first. Yeah. And you can see that 10 ring glowing, folks. So they have a good eyesight on these I think, scoring rings. I think yeah. Emily tries to shoot a 12. here. She, I don't know what she's going to do. I think a 12 is a play, but she might, with the references, she might shoot the 14. She probably just, she let down there. We think she. She's, uh, that's, that target's in the bright. So you yep. can see her pushing a button on her sight. She has a light on the sight that lights her pin up. And when she pulled her pin up there, that target is is killing her pin. She couldn't see the fiber in it, so she's blowing her pin up brighter so she can see where she's aiming. she got 20 seconds on the clock. I think you almost have to try to 14 this target. So steady, even with all the pressure. She's good. Ah, just Five under seconds. it. Yeah, she shot low right at the 14, yep. so she's going to get an 8. That'll put her at 459. All right, Primley. Good shot. If this one turned out this good, these next two, these next three are going to be awesome. I mean, 
Here comes Katie Boardwell, and I mean, second place is she, on the table. So she, if she shoots an eight, she goes to 460, she's on the podium. Right. So I think she 14s this thing. I think you try to get second away from Sharon here. Maybe shoot it for your lowest number, aim solid at the 14, and if you do miss it, you miss in the eight ring, so you at least get on the podium. Because the podium comes with extra bonus checks. Yeah. If she shoots a five here, she goes to 457, and Emily would finish in third. So she needs an eight or better to get a podium right here. As hot as she's been, why not? That's her brother Glenn there holding the umbrella. Oh, she went for a, she got a 10. Yeah. I think that's in the 10. Okay, so she's at 62. So she's gonna at least get third. 462. All right, Caitlin. Hey, and why not? Yeah. You, oh, man, I think Caitlin. she might have just missed Caitlin it. Caitlin yeah, oh, she got just eight. out. Single 10 on her car, but a great shoot down. Okay, 460. So she still, she still gets still third. She still yep. gets third. Yeah, she still gets third. Good for her. To, hey, come in in fifth. Like, it looked like with no chance. Yes. And to shoot your way to the podium. is really impressive. good. And same scenario for Sharon here. If she shoots an 8, she's a 61. She still gets second place. If she shoots a 14, puts her at 67. Kaylee just needs an 8 to win, which I don't think that's a – that's not a challenging shot for Kaylee at this distance. I don't know what it is, but it's not too far. Right. And Sharon was – getting instructions, doing the math in her head. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyrell was explaining to her the scoring options. I think she bears down here and tries to shoot a 12. If she ends up shooting an eight, she still takes second. That's really the best you can ask for right now. I don't think she called up her, so I think she'll no. shoot. I think she'll shoot hard at this lower 12 here. And as good as she is, she's liable to hit it. Dead quiet here. Oh, she went. Or it hit high, but she did not call upper. All right. That's a ten. That's a ten. So she's going to do a sixty-three. Yep. How much more magic she has in that bow tonight? And so Kaylee Johnston now all she needs to do is hit fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she needs five points. She needs four points to win, but there's not a four ring out there, so anything in this animal, if she hits it, she'll be your champion. Again, Darren, kudos to Sharon and Katie, who are both fourth and fifth. Now they come in and knock second the others third, off, and yeah. they're second and third. Emily was in second. She's going to drop down to fourth. Aaron, I know how hard Aaron's working right now. She's shooting really good, so she came in in third, and she's going to finish in fifth. And that's why we shoot all five or six of these arrows, because you just never know. People, the crowd is uh, egging her on for a 14. They want a 14. Doesn't matter. All she has to do is hit fall. Yeah, all she has to do is hit it. I, if, I, if it's me, I put my pin in the middle of that core. <laughs> I was going to say, Kaylee's not a showboat, uh, so uh, she might not. She she's not Tim Gillian. She's going to cash some checks, but she's got to hit yep, it. There, there you go. Goes. Middle of the core. Take it. Great <laughs> shot, Kaylee. Good weekend. <laughs> Solid, solid weekend for Kate. Absolutely. I'm sorry for Kaylee. Kaylee I started yep, to say Katie. Yep. Solid weekend for Katie, too, <laughs> but congrats on to your winner there. There it is. It's official. That's going to be Kaylee Johnson's first win Four, of this season. And Kaylee is going to make her way over to the winner's circle, and we're going to have a word with her. Kaylee's just about there, the, the shooting area. Uh, okay, so we're waiting for our camera to shift around there to get Kaylee Johnston in front of our interview area. She's got to get the headset on. What a finish. It's fantastic I mean, shooting right there. That is, as we said, and that's the one I was not expecting to be too interesting. We had 19 points separating first and fifth right there, and it was like back and forth, up and down, <laughs> like, wow. 
All right, Kaylee Johnston, there she is. Kaylee, hey, you did what you needed to do. Tell us how that feels to get your first win of the season. Man, it feels really good after going all year without winning a tournament. And then this year, a bunch of seconds and thirds and every shoot down. It just, it just finally feels good to win one. Kaylee, I know to be a good archer out here, you have to have some consistency and you're always in the mix. What do you contribute that consistency to? Because you work full time, you're not a full time archer, but you're always in the mix. Why are you always in the mix? I, I just try the hardest that I can. I, I'm very dedicated. I love the sport and I'm going to give it my all. Congratulations on a great weekend. Thank Congrats, you. Congrats, Kaylee. Thank you. And All I just want to say thank you to everybody, even my work family, for letting me come out here and do this. This, you know, working full time and traveling isn't easy, but I appreciate everything they do to allow me to do that. Great job. Thank you. Absolutely. Kaylee Johnston, great win there. Shout out to her coworkers. They know what it's like. All right, folks, here at Fort Massac, we are just a few minutes away from Senior Pro. Don't go anywhere.
Jeff's an inside out 12. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Fort Massac. There, we got a good look at my friend Darren Christenberry. But, Darren, we are looking at the board now. Tell us what we got. The first shoot off was really exciting. <laughs> this one is so tight that it's hard telling who's going to win it. Jeff Hopkins has won everything. He's won a million tournaments. He's at a 418. Tony Taza, I called him a silent assassin a couple times ago because he just sneaks in there and does what Tony does. Tim Gillingham's a different kind of aggressive. He's at 416 as well. Michael Braden's as solid as they come. Joe Pitt shot great this weekend. So you can see from the graphic, 18 up and then four at 16 up. This is anybody's ball game. <laughs> we don't want to wait any longer. Nathan Brooks, bring out our archers. All right, let's get started. Here in the Senior Pro Division, in fifth place from Windsor, Virginia, shooting for Hoyt, Mr. Joe Pitt. Your fourth place qualifier from Keller, Texas, shooting for PSE, Michael Braden. And in third place, from Provo, Utah, shooting for Botech, Tim Gillingham. In second place, from Boswell, Pennsylvania, shooting for Hoyt, Tony Tazza. And in first place, from Lacona, Iowa, shooting for Martin Archery, Jeff Hopkins. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, All right, Darren, here we go. As you mentioned, two points separating the entire field here. Yeah, this is uh, this should be really good. I mean, we can we could see a lot of lead changes right here. Like I said, Tim Gillingham, you guys, if you've watched in the past. Tim's awesome at this game. He's he's very aggressive, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him shoot at a 14 on this turkey. Uh, Jeff Hopkins is leading. He's not here to get second or third. He doesn't care about a podium. So if someone makes a move, Jeff will mash the gas and try to make the move and follow him up. So Tony just kind of chips away at it. Joe Pitt, I'm sure, is looking for his first win. Michael Braid's no stranger to the podium. This should be a really good shoot down. There's a good look at Tony from Boswell, PA. There's Michael Braden from Texas. Mike works hard. He's a coach. He's been a professional archer for years. He does the same thing every single time, and he holds like a rock. Look at that stabilizer. Doesn't even Just wiggle. Doesn't move. Good strong shot from Mike. That's oh, a great arrow a right 12 there. On the longest target out there. That's a good way to start. <laughs> that's that's only the second bonus ring we've seen, and maybe the first 12, because Katie, Katie Boardwell shot a 14 on that. I believe so. Tim did shoot at the 14. I don't know if he got it, but he did shoot at it. First up, we got Jeff Hopkins. Jeff with a, like 10. a 10. 428 for Jeff. Let's see what Mr. I'm Hopkins. getting excited already about this one. <laughs> 10 for Jeff. Good shot. I'm kind of an archery geek, so this stuff kind of this, well, this gets me going. This is your division. You shoot yep. with these guys. Yep. You know them all real well. And they whooped my bottom this weekend. So, uh, but I got to sit with PJ. So. Good ten for Tony. Four twenty six. Tim Gillingham with a bonus ring here. Yeah, this is a judging class as well. Yesterday, to me, the target I could not set my sight in the right spot. I had such a tough time picking the numbers. 
These guys didn't. That's why they're out there. Look at Gillingham, 14 points. Guess who the new leader is? There you go. He's That's what he does. 430. Look at that smile. Jumped into first place. Big deep breath. We saw him on the course yesterday, angrier right, as than a rattlesnake <laughs> as usual, and here he is in the lead. <laughs> Tim wears these emotions on his sleeve. This is just a yardage judging contest, and it is, but you have to shoot well too, and he does both very well. This is the one, Michael. Good Graydon. shot from Mike, 12, 12 points. Michael there ought to be bonus points for four. hitting a bonus yeah. on that one. 428, so he's now tied with Jeff for second. And it won't be our last, I assure you. Joe Pitt looks and like he Joe shot Pitt. in an upper, and if my Wolf. naked eye is correct, it's going to be tall for an eight. Joe called for the upper 12. Yep, just high. Yep. Naked eye did not deceive, so puts him at a 424. So now he's six points behind Tim. That's one arrow. Tim shoots a 14. Joe shoots an eight. Six point swing. That's how fast it happens. Crazy. And hey, Tim is now Joe. our leader. All right. Hopkins stays at 428. Michael First Braden now, moves to 428. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like that. Oh no, Jeff Hopkins second in a tie Jeff for Hopkins second place there. Tony Taz at 426. Third is Joe Michael Pitt Braden 424. So what this tells me, Tim's numbers are perfect. Michael Braden's numbers are perfect. They stepped up there and hit a bonus ring on the first arrow. Tim's going to the longest target now, so it's going to be behind him. He shoots a 10 or 12 here. He's going to be a handful. Same with Mike. Mike 12, the longest target out there. So he's saying, okay, my numbers are good. I'm seeing things right. I can aim a little more aggressive. So he's he's probably going to try to smash the 12 on this wolf and, and make another move toward the top. As Tim always says, when you judge correctly, you seem to judge more correctly. That's right. And when you judge wrong, it you, gets worse. It gets worse. It's momentum. There's a good look at Tony Tazer right there, owner of the archery zone. And I don't know. He lives in Boswell. I'm not sure where his shop is, but it's the archery zone there it in PA. It is in Johnstown. There you go, Johnstown. Yep. And I don't know if he shot at the 14 or what, but he got 10 points out of it. Tim might have gotten a 12 on wow. that he, Are he, you kidding? He's going to be in one of these grooves where you just oh. can't beat him. No, he called upper. Okay. So he's going to be on. Hey, but a 10. He still may be in one of those grooves where you just can't beat him. Let's see what we got. Good look at Michael Braden on this. So wolf, Joe. First up, Joe Pitt. See, Joe's overjudging everything. He hit high on the Wolf. He's hit high on this Audad. Right. For Joe Pitt. Another eight for Joe. Eight for Joe. 432. Looking for the 14. So he's going to have to make an adjustment. He's like, okay, I'm seeing everything hot. I better cut a yard or two when I shoot this next one. Next up, Jeff Hopkins. I call, it, by two I call it getting calibrated. He's, he's a little over. He's overjudging his calibration yeah. a little bit. Ten. Ten for Jeff, 438. Jeff solid and with score. only five targets, Next up is and Tony Taza. folks like Currently at 426. Michael and Tony and Still Tim in come in, and they're on. Mm -hmm. There's not much room for error out there. And for Tony on the like ten. See, he's straight under the 14, but caught that 10 <laughs> line. So that's a, I think that's a, a good miss right ten there. Tony Taza. That is. risk assessment there he, he limited minimal he damage I mean really he, he that's bonus points because I'm sure he was shooting at that 14. All right. Tim Gilliam coming off a of 14 that jumped him into first Here place. Comes Tim Currently he's gonna wish he hadn't called up mm -hmm. I think. No he hit the bottom 12 and it's just gonna be 10 points. Solid 10 on the dough for Tim Still a great arrow get 10 points on that long target get past it. Moves him to 440 he's still got a two-point lead over Jeff. And move him into a tie with Tim. Michael Braden coming around here. I think that's a 10. All right, for Michael Braden. Yep, yep. center, dead 10. center. You should mention Michael that center Lucent ring there uh, is just Tim worth 10 tie points. Tie it's emblazoned in the target, but Tim it is Gilliam not a bonus ring. Ring. 13 bonus rings. Jeff is in second at 438, 13 bonus Tim's rings. Tim's moving Michael's to the wolf, and he's coming around rings. to the Audad, finishing Tony's on the hyena. 436 and 14 bonus Jeff rings. is now is on the turkey, so we might see some fireworks here Michael, out of Jeff. Are you ready? If he can see where to aim, this is a chance for him to get some points back. All right. Jeff, and like Tony, if you miss, miss it low. Now. Have a chance to yeah. make a mistake and still get a little bit of a reward for it. There's the big man, Mr. Gillingham. There he is. Okay, folks who are watching are going to be asking about that stabilizer setup. Mm. It's unusual. Four bars. 
Yeah, but it works for him. Uh-oh, he doesn't oh, like that. No. We might see some fireworks out of him. He's not happy with that. Uh-uh. Oh, and look, there's Jeff Hopkins. Look at Mr. Got Hopkins. 14. There's Joe, Joe Pitt. Yep. He's got 30 seconds. Plenty of time. He's shooting at the hyena. There he Center got the 10. 10 ring. Yep. All right. So Michael Braden there shooting at the Audad. Good slow motion. Oh, yeah. Oh, he got it. Michael B's got no some cool. game. He does. Michael B's got some game. Yep, no question. Okay. Michael Braden, currently in. I don't think he called up or did he? No, there's place. no thing. No there it comes. 12 there points. 450. Awesome. 450. Jeff's going right. to take the lead that's back, and this that's a big arrow. Fine. Tim shot an eight, Jeff shot a 14. Joe that's Pitt. another one of those six-point swing. swings Joey right there. Yep, that's big. Time. 442 for Joe Pitt. This is Joe Pitt. Got him a 10, 442. Now we come to Jeff Hopkins. Jeff Hopkins. This is the shortest eight. target Four on the course. Into a tie for, with Michael Brayden at 450. I judged some with Jeff the other day. I actually practiced with him yesterday morning for a little while, and I got to judge with him when we shot the pro in the other day. Man, he knows how far these 14. targets are. <laughs> he really does. That puts him at 452. Can just walk up real quick and be like, well, it's not this. I mean, he knows right away what they're not, and that's half the battle. If you can figure out what they're not, they're a lot easier to figure out what they are. And he's been doing this for years, and he's one of the best at judging distance. He may not always tell you the truth right. of what he shot it for. <laughs> he likes to play games he out there. He does. There's a good 10. <laughs> That's Tim. Or Tony, excuse Tony me. Tony with a 10, 4, 4, 6. Yeah, Jeff may not always tell the truth, <laughs> but you will get some and kind of story out of it. His favorite Even expression is, man, that got there quick. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has burned more than one person with that saying over the years. Keep him in first place. Tim did get an eight, eight there. For Tim Gillingham. It is right. officially now All right. an we eight. So, yeah. Jungled around Jungled now. Leader. Jeff Hopkins Jeff back Hopkins in the lead. Four, mm -hmm. Michael Braden at 450. Tim Gillingham at 48. At Tony Taz at 46. And Joe rings. Pitt at 42. Yeah. At they were all tied uh, other Taz than Jeff. And the only thing that separated them was bonus rings. So, we can't really say they flip flopped a lot of positions there. But as you can see, every bonus ring counts, every point counts. And 14 to 8, six point swings. You can't survive very many of those. So, Tim's going to have to get back on his horse here and hit a bonus ring or two in these next two targets to have a chance to win. Tony Taz is staring down that wolf on the far side there. It is. Not the longest, not the shortest, Are but he can ready, see Tim? it real good. There's Are a nice sunlight on it. Big deep breath. I have a feeling he's gunning for he's something great. extra great. here. Tim got a little extra air in the lungs right there, too. All Let's right. see what he does. He may we'll try to go for it right here. He now. may try to 14 this Audad. It's a big, on that Audad, it's actually bigger than the 12 ring, the and 14 I'm, is. And it's out in the wide open sun. I'm sure he can see it. So this is a good look at Tim right there. We'll know. Oh, oh there yeah. he is. Good <laughs> night. <laughs> that guy. That's why they call him the hammer. He's good. <laughs> he's, he's, and there's, here's a good look at Tony. Tony's a man. Oh, oh he went at the 14 as did. well. Just that's going to be big. Ouch. So that's a nine point swing between right. Tim and Tony yeah. right there. 14 Early to a five. Place. Tim Gillingham. There on he the goes. Yeah. Not settling for a simple four. Six, two. Come on. This is far from over, folks. Look at that <laughs> smile. Come on. Far from over. <laughs> what can erase the frown on Tim Gillingham's face from an eight but a 14? Yeah. Yeah. He, All right. Next there's a good Michael 12 Ray. to be call upper. Ten. I don't Michael? see a cone. No, he did not. Just a 10. 460 for Michael B. And for Joe Pitt. Currently at 442. We were expecting this seesaw here. Yes, and it's happening. It's happening. So then this was Joe shooting at the 14 on yeah. the turkey. And he's got eight. he's low left for an eight. Take a four, four fifty. fifty. Yep. Next up. And then Jeff went to the long deer. For the leader after the third round. I 
He, oh, oh, come on. Yeah. Are you kidding? I'm telling you, he knows how far these things are. He doesn't have a rangefinder, but he knows. That's incredible shot there. The guy's got game. 12 for Jeff Hopkins. That's awesome. Of course, 64. He's about eight feet tall, so that dip probably doesn't affect him as much. He can see right over it. I gave Jeff a hug the other day. I can't get my arms around him. I'm a pretty big fella. I can't get my arms around him. <laughs> he is a big Iowa farmer. His yeah, son Scott competes in the open pro division out here. There's the five for Tony. Puts him at a 451. So Tony doesn't even have a choice but right. to shoot at a 14 with this all dead to try to make the final arrow. Fives are fives are brutal when it's this close. It's just brutal. But right. you know he's Jeff trying to make a move, trying to get in contention, and sometimes you make a mistake, and he got a little low right right there, and it cost him big. And third now is Michael Brady. So here comes the fifth arrow. Tony Jeff Tavis Hopkins, 464. Tim Gilliam, second, 462. Michael Braden, 460. Tony Tazza, 451. And Joe Pitt, 450. Mm -hmm. One more arrow left before we go to a sixth and final arrow. Jeff's in second. Tim's in second. Mike's in third. And Tony and Joe are fighting for the fifth arrow goal. right now. Arrow Tim and Jeff are both shooting right. mid range Gentlemen, targets for the we'll field. One minute now. They're not the longest, not the shortest. There's a good look at Jeff. He's firing that release off of his pinky. He gets his thumb on there, puts some pressure, but he's actually firing that where there's a pinky trigger. Yep. He's firing with his little finger. It's got a trigger at both ends. Yep. You can choose. Oh, he's just right. Good 10 for Jeff. He gave nothing up, so he'll be in good shape for the final arrow. Michael got the 14 on that turkey, wow. I believe. That is real close. That's big. Tim's looking at them both. There's Tony, went for the 14. I think he got oh, it. Man, that is close with that shadow. I Yo, think he's got Scott the top Parrott of that thing. He needed it. Umbrella holder. Here we go. Scott Parrott. This he's is good. Up a new position. Right, look at it, look at it Tony pulling. Tazza. We're looking over the top of it. There, there, there we go. There oh, that's yeah. in there. Solid in there. That's in there. 14 points for yes. Mr. Tony Tazza. Four, yes. Six, five. That may put him in a position to go to that fifth and sixth and final arrow. So he's going to make the sixth and All final right. arrow. Jeff just yep. shot Next a 10, so Tim Tony will be within clock. nine points of it. Tim did call upper. And got it. Got it. Wow. Four. Seven four. So him and Jeff are tied. Tim's hit at least two bonus rings. Jeff's hit two. So Jeff's going to get the final arrow, I think. I think Jeff's going to have more bonus rings, so he'll get a shoot last. Michael B. This is Michael. That's 14 points from what I see. 14. Yes, sure it is. Enough. That's a 474. Three way tie for first place. Three way tie for first place now. <laughs> Joe went for the 14 to try to get into the final arrow. Yeah. Let's see. It's, it it's looks in the high. right area. Yeah, uh, it's high. Too high. So he's going to get a five, finish with a 455. Nothing to lose. Well, I no. guess it, I can't say that. He he didn't really come in fifth. He came in tied for second. For Joe. Somebody has to finish yeah, fifth, and that's going to be Joe. Good weekend, though. Good weekend. I heard Richard Owens, sure. another Jeff senior pro, talking this weekend that him and Joe had been talking on the phone, and he didn't reveal the plan, but he said Joe was using a new strategy out here, and it obviously worked. He shot well this weekend. Yes, sir. So, don't know what that strategy is, but it's working. All right. What do we got? Jeff Hopkins, straight right. Ten for Jeff Hopkins. Ten, four, seven, four. All right. Wow. So only right, Joe Pitt will not advance. Everyone else is in play. Mm -hmm. Tony's, nine points, Tony's nine points behind. Tony's nine points behind those three guys. So Tony's going to shoot a 14. I'm getting the bonus and ring count. Tony Taz at 465. He's still alive within 10 points. He's at 465 and 15. Now let's give Joe Pitt and the rest of them a round of applause for a great shoot now. I heard Michael Braden, who has 14 bonus rings. I don't know what Tim and Jeff have. Tim okay, hit the turkey, shoot one more arrow. the deer, so if he hit the same numbers Jeff the and Tim might be tied on bonus rings. If Jeff and Tim are still tied for total score and bonus rings, we'll go to a they are. closer to the tw lower 12 tiebreaker. And we have and a we got the word from Mike Tyrell, so if they are tied, there won't be yep. any more they are tied currently, yep. and he's saying if they're tied after this next one. 
we will go to closest to the center of the 12 ring for a shoot off. That's if you're tied on score and bonus ring. I was going to say, I, I think they would back this one up a little bit as tight as this is. Yeah, he's pushing. He's pushing Ken Keep back going. there. He's got Keep a distance. Going. He's got a distance in his mind that he wants this to be. Hey, Ken, just take it back to the fort. And I'm guessing it's well over 40 <laughs> yards from what it looks like. We don't know what the distance is, but it's a good little poke. So they're going to have to make a shot yep. to hit a bonus ring here. Do want to mention this is a replica fort behind this target here. <laughs> At fort Massac. We are right on the banks of the mighty Ohio River, Kentucky, just across the across the river. Beautiful setting here. Right across from Paducah, Kentucky. Paducah, Kentucky. Yeah, look at that scenery. What That's a, a great place to shoot a boat. Yeah, I tell huh? you what, this is in the. It's perfect. The wind is is not a factor, right. and that's one of the biggest things you worry about out here is how windy is it going to be during yeah. an outside shoot. Now, when we have these inside venues, the hardest thing is judging the distance. You go from all this green grass and all the foliage and everything to a concrete floor or some type of an artificial floor. It's hard to judge those targets, but this is as good a shooting conditions as you ask as you can ask for. Usually, we have that wind coming in off the river, but it just isn't there today. Mm -mm. It is hot. I guess we got to complain yeah. something well, about the weather. And the humidity is really not <laughs> over overwhelming. It's not no. horrible. Even though it's 96 a little while ago, it's not overwhelming. Yeah, once that sun got behind the trees, it definitely came down a few degrees. But I imagine they're sweating out there, mm -hmm. Tony, Tim, and Jeff. Yeah, this is crazy good right here. Tony's nine points behind, so he can shoot this thing in the ear if he wants to, and he's probably going to finish in fourth, probably. That's why we shoot him. You never know. Yeah. Someone can miss the other side. They can, it can have a misfire. You, you just never know. And I'm not – don't get me wrong. I'm not wishing any ill on anybody. It's just this is why we're shooting him because you just never know. Even though Tony's nine points behind – he shoots a 14 here and somebody makes a boo-boo, then, you know, he could get on the podium. Or just throw it into the Ohio River. All right, you ready? 14 puts we'll him at 79. If someone else would shoot a five, they would be at 79. Tony probably has more bonus rings, so he could, he could, on paper, get third. But he has to shoot a 14 to have a chance. So we're told Tony has the most bonus rings. Let's see what he's got here. Oh, just, just under, under it. it. That's a good shot, though. That That's a is. long arrow, long yeah. target. It is a All long right. target. Good effort. Eight Number points puts through. him at 473, so he is definitely going to be your fourth Let's place finisher. For here, folks. Eight yep. for Tony just off. Because nice if anybody down, misses, they're still at 474. Next up. All right, one of our. Three-way leaders in score. 474 trails by one bonus ring. So Mike's guaranteed third place. Yeah. I don't know if folks heard that, but Mike Tyrell said he is one You're bonus ready, ring behind the other two. Is he ready? So he needs to make something happen here right, if he wants we'll to move up. I, I think it's 14 or nothing. He could try to 12 it, you know, if he's more comfortable aiming down there at that 12 or has a better reference. If he shoots a bonus ring, that's huge forces the other guys to shoot a 12 or a 14. So let's see what Mike decides to do. Uh, upper. Did he call upper? I don't know. I don't he's see got the at least He's got at least 10 no, points. he shook his head. I think he was not calling upper. So he's at 484. And all right. Let's see how Michael did here. And you want to talk about Single Solid arrow Michael pressure. Brayden Michael had a one arrow shot for $10,000 at the Vegas yeah, shoot this year. And smashed it. <laughs> in, uh, center. <laughs> absolute dead center. So next up is Tim Gillingham, currently at four. So now I, I wonder what Tim's thinking here, you know. If he shoots a 10, if he shoots a 10, he finishes ahead of Tony. But then, you know, Jeff can shoot a 12 or a 14. Yeah. If Tim decides to shoot at a 14 and shoots an eight or a five, then he's going to finish in third. All right. He's calling he's upper. For the 14, that doesn't mean he's going up. Excellent strategy. He he's going to try to hit the needs. upper 12 and put the pressure on Jeff. Yeah. 
then Jeff has to shoot it a 14 to win outright. But if he, then he shoots an eight or five, Michael slips into no. second. So there's a right. lot of lot of different scenarios right here. He he cannot shoot an eight. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Tim goes 10 or 12 and then puts all the pressure on Jeff to try to win it, especially if he hits a ring. Oh, and he, he called up. He it. got it. Smoked Are it. Are you kidding? Wow. <laughs> wow. 86. And... <laughs> I just have to laugh. Wow. This guy. <laughs> I just have to laugh. So now Jeff has, if he wants to win outright, he shoots at the 14. Yeah. If he wants to continue to shoot, he hits a 12. They stay tied on score and bonus rings. They have a one arrow closest to center. I don't think Jeff wants to extend it. I think Jeff shoots at the 14 here and tries to win it outright. He's got the cone out front. He's not an upper shooter. I don't know if he just left it there. I think he'll draw back and see what he sees. If he can see the 14, he'll shoot it. If not, he'll let down. He'll go back to the upper potentially. He shoots an eight. Oh, he missed it. So Jeff's going to get third. Tim's going to win. Michael Braden's going to get second. Wow. He had the distance pretty good, but he shot to the right. A little bit of movement there. That's a nervy arrow. Eight for Jeff Hopkins. Mm. Wow. Tim Gillingham. Four, 82. Is that crazy? That was fun. This guy finds a way. <laughs> he just finds a way to win. He does. And we're going to get to talk to him about it. He is our leader. Tim Gillingham is for shooter of the year in this class. Um, so he just keeps on rolling. Some big arrows. Tim Gillingham is headed back to the interview area. Unbelievable. <laughs> that was crazy. It's, on, it's only go, it's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. Man. Tim Gillingham, tell us about that. I mean, that was a nail biter from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, that brings back old open pro shoot offs with Levi and everybody. I mean, it was, I don't know if I've ever been in that dynamic one for quite a while. That was, I didn't really want to have to shoot that 14 on that odd dad, but I screwed up the wolves, so. <laughs> How do you, I mean, you came out there and you needed some of those bonus rings. You knew it was going to be tight going in. Tell us a little bit about your strategy as far as which ones you wanted and which ones you needed. Well, I, I kind of, you know, I can say drew a good straw, bad straw, whatever, but I had to shoot the short one first, so I had to make my decision right out of the gate. So I just went all in and hammered the 14 on the first one. Uh, they just wouldn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, it seems like you, uh, you know, we talk about yardage judging. You're always in the mix. You find a way to win, and you obviously judge those targets really well out there. I said when you 14 that turkey, I said he might be on, on one of those streaks where he's hard to beat. You always find a way, buddy. Congrats on being so consistent out there. Uh, th thank you. I mean, I just, uh, you know, I, I got them all right but the deer and the wolf, and I kind of knew the wolf. I was over judging it. I could – when I see the judges down there, it kind of gave me a clue, and I, I just, that's a target I overjudge a lot. And hey, you, know, you can and smile, Tim. You want? Yeah, <laughs> that, was a, that was a good one for sure. Congratulations right, on thanks. another great weekend, Tim. All right, thank you very much. Congrats, Tim All right. Gillingham. <laughs> All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We have the Open Pro Division when we come back here at Fort Massac for the Matthews Pro Am. Don't go anywhere.
close. It looks good from over there. Man, I've been close to a bunch of Welcome back, everybody, to the Matthews Pro-Am at Fort Massac. Darren Christianberry there is our Open Pro Leaderboard. A new name at the top of the list there. Run it down for us. Jacob is a, a man of few words. He <laughs> he doesn't say a whole lot, but, man, he made a shoot down last year. I talked about him. The kid's a great archer. He's got a good indoor game. His 3D game's getting better and better. Obviously, you can see that. He's at the top of the leaderboard. Andy Callaway is still fighting and clawing to get his first win. Two points behind Jacob. Danny Evans is a great yardage judger. He's right there in the middle of the pack with a 424. No stranger to this top five, Levi Morgan, Dan McCarthy. Those three guys in first, second, third don't want those two chasing them, but unfortunately they are. This is wide open, anybody's ball game. <laughs> All right, we definitely want to get the action started. Let's go to Nathan Brooks to bring in our archers. For the next event this afternoon, Open Pro Division. Start off in fifth place. From Wazika, Wisconsin, shooting for Matthews, Dan McCarthy. And in fourth place, from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, also shooting for Matthews, Levi Morgan. In third place, from Monticello, Illinois, shooting for Matthews, Danny Evans. And in second place, from Lancaster, South Carolina, shooting for Matthews, Andy Calloway. And your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, shooting for Darton Archery, Jacob Sluzars. <laughs> All right, Darren, there you go. Jacob Sluzars, this is his fifth right, tournament in the in any ASA at the pro level, and it's his second shoot down, and he's leading the way. 40% of the time he's in the shoot off. That's pretty good odds right there. Like I said, the kid, he's got some game. Yeah. He's a really good archer. He's obviously a good yardage judger. He was in the mix last weekend in an IBO tournament. He's leading coming in here after 40 targets and 28 up. That's nothing to sneeze at right there. So you're going to see some bonus rings here. There was a lot of rings shot there in both the women's and the seniors, but. We're going to be a, a bonus ring festival in this one, and I think in the known pro coming up too. So this one ought to be really good. There's Mr. Levi Morgan. He's currently in fourth. I believe he called up, or he's starting on that long deer. So he's going to get calibrated right off the bat here and see where he lies. Good steady shot. He's got 10 points. There's Dan shooting at the wolf. Bang. Look at that. 14. Gosh, this guy. Come on. You don't want him following you. Nope. I said at the last tournament when, when Sean Greathouse was leading seniors that leads are hard to hang on to here. And this here comes Dan right off the bat. All right. That First was Danny up, Evans Jacob. gunning for that turkey. Early but here's Jacob Slusars. Center 10. Center 10. Nothing wrong with that. But he, we know what's happening behind yep. him. I talked to him, and he was so like, Jacob, you know, he needs to target, pick when he has ten. to go for it. He mm -hmm. said he's been working on that part because he said he wants to just aim and shoot it all. Of them. Yeah, yeah. Next up, Andrew Callaway. I've known him so long, he used to be Andy. There's a good looking he's Andy, and I Andrew. think he – yeah, he got it. If he called he up. He called up, and he did, and he got he's it. He's shooting a new bow. He's been shooting it really confidently this weekend, and if folks were watching last year, Andy was on the brink of winning <laughs> his first ever tournament, and the wind just took it yep. away from him. Yep, it was right here, wasn't it? It was right here. Yep, Illinois can get you. So right. he wants that first win. Danny shooting at the 14 there, starting on that close turkey. What's he got? 
Oh, oh I think he's got it. it. I thought he missed it. He's got it. Yeah. Good shot, Danny Evans. So now, Jacob's I shooting at three, four, thirty-eight. Three, right there. four, thirty-eights already. <laughs> wow. For our first three archers. So Levi just fell to fifth. He shot a ten, which is great on this long target, but he's now in fifth. This is crazy. Ten for Levi puts him at four thirty-four. Dan now, McCarthy shot a 14, so he's going to go from fifth to, well, he's there's three guys at 38, but he's going to be at a 436 right behind him. <laughs> Dan, Unbelievable. Dan always hits him when he has to. He does. 14, that's so Crazy. awesome. So we had one, two, we had three bonus rings shot in the first round of Open Pro. Let's see how many bonus rings are shot in the first round of Known Pro. And those guys are going to know the distance. Yep. I'm not picking on those guys. No. I'm just I'm just bragging on how good yes. these judging classes are, the women's, the seniors, the Open Pros. Yes. It's a skill to learn and judge and pick the distance of these targets and to be able to hit those rings that you really can't see that well. Man, it's such an awesome feat. It's a good look at Dan, Danny Evans, and Danny Evans, I got to follow him this weekend, and he just, he does things at his own pace, mm -hmm. takes his time, he does not take chances. Nice and steady, watch his finger get on that trigger, he's going to start adding pressure and pulling, he's going to wait, yep, that release fires pretty quick, good pressure. I believe he got that. Man. If he, if he 14 the turkey and 12 oh, that deer. He called upper on that deer. Okay. He got 10 points out of but it. But Jacob there, he got a 12. So Dan came around to the awe dad, correct? Yes, he did. Okay, there's Dan right there. Oh, and he donuted it again. Are you kidding me? What? Good night. Come on. How are you going to beat that? This place is going to go nuts here in a second. <laughs> Coming off a 14. That's awesome. Another 14. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. 450. So right now. And his mom's watching at home. She's got to be going nuts. So right now, Jacob's Early going, man, Darren was right. These leads are hard to hang on to <laughs> out here. There's a good look at Jacob, and he's got a 12 he got in his it. own, so yeah. he's going he's gonna to maintain. He's staying right there. 12 points. So we mentioned this is only his fifth and ASA because he's from New York the where the ASA isn't as big. Mm -hmm. And he has to drive so far to get to them. But clearly he belongs where he is. Let's see what we got. Andy got it. That's in there. <laughs> bonus ring. Andy Callaway bonus won't go away. Bonus ring. He just took the lead. He did. 452. Next up, Danny this is going to be good. He's shooting a Matthews V3X33, which is or considered a hunting bow, but he said he just started playing with it, and he was like, man, this thing shoots. He's shooting it well. He's shooting it really well. This is Danny on that long deer. He did call. I, he moved it back. I thought he had to cone out, but maybe we'll find out. Oh, yeah, they got it there. No, that's Danny Evans. I'm sorry, Danny Evans. Yep. Danny Evans. Who's in the 450? So he did get that. I thought he didn't call the upper. No, yeah, I think it will, the last, the previous archer did, and he just didn't move it back. Oh, gotcha. So 12 for Danny Evans puts him at 450. Right. Are you kidding? There's only two scores up there through four Look archers. Look at that. Levi, 14, 14. points. <laughs> 448. 448. And he's in fifth still. <laughs> you, you, you won't see more bonus rings than that right there. You no. won't. That's these guys are guessing these within a yard to hit these rings at these distances. They're getting within two to three feet, maybe even close, maybe to the yard. Wow, Andy Calloway is our leader, 452. Mm -hmm. Jacob Slusars, Danny Evans, and Dan McCarthy all at 450. Levi Morgan, 448. And we've only shot two targets. But this is anybody's game. Yes, this is good. There's a good look at Andy right there shooting that short Matthews. All right, we'll start your one minute now. He's on the longest target here. I bet he wants to, if he can just stay safe here. Yeah, just get a 10 here. Get if you get a 12, it. that's bonus points if you can 12 this thing. 
He did upper. not call upper, but he got a 10 out of it. Here's Danny Evans. Danny's on the wolf. Let's see what he does. I'm thinking he shoots at a 12. Long hold. Yeah. Still staring that's, it down. That's He's typical of Danny. He's a long holder. He got a 10. Ah. Got a 10. All right. Let's see where we're at. Man, right. Levi Morgan was up first. Oh, and he got the 14. <laughs> Man. This is Four good. The leader is this is good. I heard Levi say before he started, he said, man, I'm hitting left and right. It doesn't look like he's hitting left and right to me. And now he's looking at the 14 wow. on that odd dad, which is rather inviting. 460. So he went in and shot it. 14. 14 for Levi Morgan. He's in the 462. He was having trouble finding bonus rings today on the range, and here he's just ring, ring, no, ring. <laughs> So what did McCarthy do? Uh, he McCarthy. took a 10. Oh, yeah. just a 10. Yeah. Just a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot, Dan. Number 60. Levi just jumped in front yeah, of him. He did. Yeah, Dan's hit two 14s. Levi's hit two 14s. Right. So now we come to Jacob, who is at least safe with a 10. I don't believe he. He went at the 14. Oh, he went for the turkey. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, he's shooting the turkey. Let's see what he's he, And he's, he's got, got it. Darren. This is good. Let's see what he does. This Four, is crazy good. 64. So he takes the lead back. All right, guys, turn the targets around. So you talk. Can't uh, see the now, on the up. first day, Jacob Slusars, his sight broke. So he had to call breakdown. He could not move his sight. He oh. ran back to the true ball trailer. They and took the ball Dallas. bearing out of it. Had to run back and make up three targets. And Tim here he Brandard is in the lead. That's awesome. Two. There's a good 10 for Andy. That's a great, that's 10 points on that oh target's yeah. good. So 462. So him and Levi are tied for second right now. Jacob took the lead back with that Man, 14 Danny at 464. Evans. Danny Evans got a 10, so he's gonna be at 460. Him and Dan are gonna be tied for, for do you call that fourth and fifth or you call that third? I don't know. I don't either. We uh, still got nothing. We got three arrows to go, I know that. Jacob, three down, three to go. But how about Jacob Flusar? He's giving Danny nothing Dan back. Mm -mm. No. In his second shoot down ever, he's, good, he's got a good mental Every game. Jacob's a strong end indoor shooter and a strong indoor shooter has to be mentally stable there you know you can't let the pressure get to you indoors is a game of you can't miss you have to shoot perfect and he handles those situations pretty well so he's got a good mindset and he's used to pressure you know so he knows these guys are coming for him and he's handling it well like a champ he is on the longest target now there's Andy Calloway he's on the wolf I'm interested to see what he does here because he can see that 14 right now. Mm -hmm. Nice and steady aim, barely moving there. Uh, he went upper and he called upper. And I think he got it. Oh, oh Jake. See, now there's the first mistake we've seen. Jacob got just right for an eight there. He did. Andy, Andy Evans is still holding. Danny's shooting the odd dad, target number one. He's got 25 seconds, plenty of time. Center, Center 10. 10. All right. All right, we got some moves here. Andy Calloway right. did what he needed to do. Andy Evans currently at 460. That's default mode. You get long in that clock and get to aim at those rings. You move that pin back towards center of the 10, points. make the best shot you can. That might be what Danny did there. He was getting yep, long in that shot. Yep. So he's going to go to a 470 with 10 points right there. All right. You mentioned Danny Evans. Danny. Sort of a local boy. He's from yeah. Illinois. Mm -hmm. Monticello, yeah. Illinois. Monticello. Is that yep, yep, that's right. It's a bit north of here, but... Next, Levi Morgan, currently two points behind our leader. Levi Started out on six that hyena. Leader. Ten for Levi Morgan, moves into 472. Ten for Just Levi. Down. So Levi's going to get a finish on the turkey, the shortest target out there. 472. Here's Dan on this turkey, and he looks like he shot at the 14. I, I'm just going to guess that he got it. It's on the bottom side if he did, it looks like. Yeah, it's 8 o'clock he area it. on it, but he's got it. Dan McCarthy, currently at four. Wow. Three 14s for Dan four, McCarthy. Four, seven, four. Three 14s. You don't want him chasing you. For Dan McCarthy. That's crazy. So see, 14 for Dan, 8 for Jacob on the long deer. There's one of those six-point swings. Yeah. It's huge. Maybe back in the lead. Maybe in the lead. Every yeah. arrow is so big out here.
this is going to take him to a 472. Puts Jacob in an awkward spot going yeah. to a medium distance wolf that Dan 14 earlier. Jacob's going to need to 14 it to have a chance to win this tournament, I think. Eight for Jacob. It's going to be Jacob. 472. 472. But he's only two points behind Dan, so yep. that's not, but it's, that's not a big deficit, but a six point yeah. swing was huge right there. I think Andy's going to move up Andy to tie Dan. Yep. He called upper 12. He's got the cone out front. And that oh, is 12 yep, points. That is 12. 474. Four. Four. This is good. This is Andy. shaping out. Andrew Callaway is now at four this is shaping out to be exactly a repeat of last year. Dan and yep. Andy came down to the very end, and Dan ended up winning it over Andy. And, and Dan will tell you, he's not going to give a tournament nope. away. He, he's going to do everything he can to win, but he's pulling for these guys too. You know, he's he's not going to give a tournament yeah. up. When he when he won last year over over Andy, he he was emotional. You could hear it in his voice that he's pulling for Andy, but. And it's, we still got two arrows to go. It's far from over. Andy's in a better position. He's shooting a shorter target. Dan's on the longest, but he's Dan McCarthy. Yeah. I mean, he could just as easily hit the 14 right here. Andy could try for a 14 if he wants to make a big move. I mean, folks have hit that thing. Can he see it? Does he know what it is? So Levi looks low on the turkey. Ooh. Ow, Andy shot it. He shot eight. right, so he went to he's going to Darn it. Yeah, let's see what Dan does. Dan's just got what in his mind what he's gonna do here. He didn't look over to see what anybody no. else did. So steady. And he hits him when he has to. Center ten, I would guess he does. Yep. Yep. There it is. Ten points. That's a good play that right there. Don't give play. anything back. Jacob did shoot at the fourteen on the wolf. I don't know what he's got yet. There's a look at Levi at that turkey. I think he's straight low. He got a 10. I know he was shooting at that 14. All right, here's Andy Callaway. That's going to be an 8. 482. He's not going to like that. All right, first up, Andrew Callaway. 8 for mm. Andrew, who sent the 482. And it goes so fast out there. They don't even Man. know what's happened right now. Come to Danny Next Evans. Up for Danny Evans with the upper he called upper. I, he was in the vicinity, but I couldn't I get a good look at it. Eight for Danny Evans. Oh, just oh, over. He just over it. 478. Levi on this turkey. He Levi, got the 10. He's going to get a 10, I believe. That's going to put him at 482. Yeah. All right, here we go. Levi Morgan, Big arrow for Jacob Sluzar's over there on that wolf. I don't know what he's got. He did shoot at the 14. Levi didn't give anything up with that 10. And Dan McCarthy, who came in in fifth place, is threatening to be the leader mm -hmm. right here. You don't want that guy chasing. We should mention, we're talking about Dan McCarthy, came in in fifth place. Dan had an eight tournament win streak mm -hmm. until the last one. It was the only one he didn't win. Yep. Levi broke that streak, but Dan had won eight ASAs in a row, which is it's a record that I don't know that will ever be rivaled. Yeah. Ten there Crazy. for Dan, 484. But if Jacob pulls a 12 out of his hat here, he'll be tied with him again. At Big four. arrow right here. Boy. Oh, and he's got oh, it. Oh, he got it. He's got Are it. you kidding He's taking the lead back. That's big. That's no big. fear. That's big. Are you kidding me? Bravo, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> you you can see that. Woo. <laughs> Bravo, Jacob. Wow. Jacob, 486. Come on. Dan McCarthy, 484. Andrew Callaway, 482. So Levi everybody's going to shoot the final Dan arrow. Danny Evans is eight points eight behind the leader, but everyone's going to shoot this final arrow. Number 14 rings are thrown out there. I have no idea what's going to happen. Man, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, this that is big. crazy. And Jacob right there, that four, he, he's the last shooter now. So he's going to get to yeah. see what he has to do. Everyone else has to decide what they want to do. And then Jacob's going to know what he needs to do to win this tournament. So they brought out the leopard again. And Scott Parent hasn't set 
the shooting spot yet. Oh, he's going to make him go diagonal. So this is going to mess with their distance. Oh, he, no, he was just retrieving his shooting stake. He's telling him to move it over. Now he's telling him to back up. All right, oh, man. Jacob. Wow. So he's using that hill. Dan McCarthy at 44 has seven yeah, this is. Has he put it down the hill a little Evans bit, moved the shooting stake up, and went over the hill. So after this arrow, that bonus ring count is almost as much not more than the score itself. If there is a tie, we There's a lot of money riding on this arrow right here. Darren, this may be. I mean, up till now, the most exciting shoot down I've ever been. A part it's of. one. It's yeah. It's been back and forth and flip flop, and every arrow, every arrow is so important out here, and you can't. I mean, you just can't slip. You shoot an eight, it happens. I mean, it's hard to get through a tournament, even in the shoot down as pressure packed as they are. It's hard to not shoot an eight out there, but when you do, and someone else hits a fourteen. You can't take six point swings very many. You just can't survive many of them. Yeah. And even Dan, he's only two points out of the lead, right, but that's huge right now. Jacob 14 and that wolf over there, that's that's going to dictate his weekend right there. Right. I so think now, so. Now they're getting to judge. Wow. Jacob Slusars, it would be his first win ever in the pro class. Andy Callaway would be his first win ever in the pro class. Mm -hmm. Dan McCarthy would be his Seven ninth, seven hundred and sixty fifth. It would be his ninth of the last ten. Yeah. Wow. And Levi Morgan, you can never count him out. No. No, this is big right here. It's a contrast. They shot the target. All the ladies in the, in the other shoot off shot this target in the wide open bright sun where they right. probably had a tough time. We saw Sharon, I believe it was, pumping up her yeah. her light. I think it was Sharon, um, so they could see it. And now the the target's completely in the shade. Yeah. Right. And they have these black spots to aim off Where's of. That? So finding yeah, a place yeah. to aim and seeing their Only pin, you can see that right there. They're going to find that 14 sits in a little open area between those two clover leaves. So seeing where they need to hit will be no problem at all on this target. They just have to figure out how far away it is. So it's funny. We're, we're sitting here looking at these uh, spot patterns. And just in talking to Dan McCarthy, they know those spot patterns. Oh, yeah. They know, you know, he'll talk about triangulating off these two. Mm -hmm. So they're generally in about the same place on each side yeah. of the target. So You can see the little black dot down below the 12. It's a dummy. It's a dummy dot. You know, it gets you, it draws you in. Okay, I need to aim yep. down at that dot right there. You can see the clover leaf in the 12, but then right below that low 12 is that black dot. It can suck you in. Hey, I can see that. Let's get my pin down there next to it. Next thing you know, whoop, I shot an eight. <laughs> so a lot of big arrows right here. Yep. Danny Evans. First up, Danny Evans. Let's do some math. He's got he's eight points behind. If he wants to win, he's got to shoot a 14. If he's trying to protect a paycheck, shoot center 10, try to hit you a 12, and see what these other guys decide to do. He's holding nice and steady. Just a little movement yeah, there. a little bit. He's left, going. right, up, down. Ah, Boy, he went off. at it. He just missed that 14. I think he did. So he missed that by a quarter inch. He probably missed that by less than one yard. And Good. what he had, so they just set it out there. He had a minute to judge that. To figure it out, yeah. And he missed it. And by. it says, I know this target well enough that I'm going to go at it. And it's it's out there. I mean, mm -hmm. this is he's not shooting 20 yards. I don't know what the distance is, no, it's but a, it's. It's a good poke. Yeah. Levi Morgan. So he's at 486. Four points and four bonus rings. So, so Levi. Levi needs a five to get third. That put him at a 487. He's, got, he's going 14. Levi does not care about second or no. third. Levi, you ready? We'll start your one he's shooting this at the 14. Yeah. All day. Does he get it? Anybody want to place any bets? Look at that pinky. On that pinky. Look there. at that pinky. Get it, big guy. Oh, donut. <laughs> Inside out. 
Are you kidding? That's so good. And you can, <laughs> one of the best in the world, and you can see how bad he wants it. That hand shaking a little bit right there. Four, nine, six. Wow. That's why that guy right there has won 13 that, open pro shooter look of the at year. That. <laughs> right between the clover leaves, inside out 14. That's so good. So Andy, 12 points does you no good. Four, he has to have a 14 to tie Levi right to. now. And he would he would overtake Levi by bonus rings. You ready? Jacob is the one on bonus rings. Ah, he's got a pile of bonus rings. Does Jacob. Mm -hmm. So if Jacob would shoot a 10, yeah. him and Levi would be tied. Andy has to shoot a 14 to tie Levi right here. So this is a big arrow for big arrow for big Andy arrow for again. Andy. And let's not forget there's one guy in between Andy and Jacob. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, this is far from over. What a good angle right there. What a good look. Oh, oh just tall. that's going to be a five. That's uh, 487. So he's one point ahead of Danny Evans, and that's probably going to get him fourth place. All right. Big deep breath right there as it left the bow. Golly. So here's Dan. I mean, Dan a 12 does it for Dan, but I, I don't see him not shooting at the 14. No, a 12 ties Dan and Levi. Six points and three bonus a four, I don't think he cares. A 14 puts him at a 98, which Jacob would have to 12 it to time, and then Jacob would have to shoot at a 14 if he wants to win outright. He's going for the 14 all the way. I'd say if we had a heart monitor on those two right now, Dan's heart level is a lot lower than what Jacob's <laughs> is. Dan's been out there a hundred times. Jacob's, and Jacob, he's handling it well. Don't get yeah. me wrong. He's, yep. he's not scared, but he's on the verge of winning his first 3D tournament, going up against a guy that's won a bunch of these and several shooter of the years. and. His fate depends on where this arrow lands, potentially. Look at that. Stone. Remember Levi's hand quiver? Look at that. You don't see that. Stone Damn. face. Got two fingers on that release. Good alignment. Keep pulling. Oh, oh he just went yep. low. He says it's an eight just low. Didn't get it. Four, nine, two. So a 10. For Jacob. So Levi with that 14. Yep. No. Big, big hit. I mean, it's not over. No. Ja I, I, Jacob can shoot it to 14 and get an eight and, and take second. All right, but he has to hit a bonus ring. A 10, him and Levi are tied. 10, and I think he wins it. He may, bear, he may really aim down hard and try to shoot a 12 here because he knows a 10. But do you really want to go into a shoot off against Levi? Are they tied on bonus rings? I think Jacob would have the most bonus rings. Oh, it would be over. If he shoots a 10, yeah, it would yeah. be over then, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah. Jacob, you ready? Here we go. I think if he shoots a 10, he wins. I think you're right. I always forget one? about those bonus rings on yeah. first place because it didn't used to break the tie, and now it does. Right. So center 10 here, and Jacob might win his first tournament. He came in with three more than Levi. I think he's got it. There's no nerves there. Look at him. Got it. Ten. I think he hit the, did he get the 12. It. It's close. I think he's just left of the 12, but I believe he's going to win. <laughs> oh. oh, that's awesome. Wow. He, he did, did 12. He it. Got it. You kidding oh, me? Man. Four, Ice nine, in his veins. Look at that. I think you'll see a lot more of this kid out there. For the, sure. Once you break that ice, he's figured, out, he's figured out he can do it. He had it going this weekend. <laughs> oh, that's really awesome. Nicest kid, too. I didn't really know him too well, but I spent some time with him. He works full time, he says, in water abatement, water damage abatement. So he's got a busy life mm, outside of archery. Man. I want to hear how he is, because I know he was feeling nerves yesterday just when he had to shoot his makeup arrows. 
So this had to be unreal That's for him. That's crazy good. <laughs> oh, wow. Jacob Slusars, tell us about that. First off, I want to get how are you feeling right now? Your first win, open pro class. Overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, you kept it together out there in that shoot-down. You needed some 14s. You got them. Your numbers were clicking. Everything was firing on all cylinders for you. I'm glad it looked that way. It was pretty shaky. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with some heavyweights out there. The only hiccup you had was on the long deer. You shot an eight-little riot, but you hit some big 14s out there. That wolf hitting that 14, that changed your whole weekend right there. And then just shooting a 10, but you 12 that final target. Man, you handled that like a champ out there. It was different. <laughs> yeah, you, I'm glad it's over. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, tell us about it, because this is only your fifth ASA tournament ever, your second shoot-down ever. Did you expect to get a win this quickly? No. I, I thought I could hang with these guys, and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's quite an accomplishment. You prove you can hang. I don't think we've seen the last of you. Congrats on a great weekend, Jacob. Congratulations, Thank you. Jacob. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. He doesn't even know what's hit him. He's still <laughs> processing it all. Great shoot down there. Next up, we got our known pro finals here at Fort Massac. Boats, it's been great so far. Don't go anywhere.
good shot. All right, Darren Christian Berry, welcome back everyone to the Matthews Pro-Am Known Pro. Time to break out the range finders and Darren, another killer leaderboard. Look at that. This should be just as good as everything we've seen. 452 for Jeff Rainey, Curtis Broadnax, Kyle Douglas, Stefan Hansen, Christopher Perkins. These guys are all world-class shooters, 450 is second, third, fourth, and fifth. Two points separating the field. Again, you've seen all these bonus rings and how it can go, how important each arrow is. This is really wide open. Anybody's ball game again. This is going to be a good one. Nathan Brooks, bring him out. For our last event of the evening, we have the known pro division. In fifth place, all the way from Ontario, Canada, in set, shooting for Matthews, Christopher Perkins. In fourth place, even further away in Denmark, <laughs> shooting for PSE, Stefan Hansen. And in third place from Liberty, Utah, shooting for PSE, Kyle Douglas. And in second place, from Social Circle, Georgia, shooting for elite archery, Curtis Broadnax. And your first place qualifier from Goddard, Kansas, shooting for Matthews, Jeff Rainey. Shoot this All right, Darren, so let's give a quick rundown because now we can talk about target distances. Yes. Tell, them what, tell them what we're looking at. This is known distance. These guys are going to use the rangefinder, click it. They're going to set their sight to the within a tenth of a yard. Target number one is the Audad. All dead, yes. Yes, Sorry. is that what it is here? Yes, it third, is. I third, wrote deer. <laughs> yeah, it's 36.7 yards. That hyena right. is 41.8. The turkey is 27.2. That long deer that you yeah, can't you see its feet is 47.2. And the wolf now. is 33.6. So that's the distances. These guys know exactly how far away they were. Everyone else was guessing. Let's see if these guys can keep up with the bonus ring count. And let's... I mean, you can't play safe. You can't. There's no safe now. No, you've got to go right here. Like Chris Perkins yep. just did. Perkins knows how to play this game. There's 14 points for Chris. That guy right there knows how to play this game. Kyle Douglas. He got it. I think I saw at least two 14s 14 there. 14 points for Kyle okay, Douglas. Yep. Some, for some lead yeah, this is going to get good quick. Gonna happen. We also There's a good look at Chris Perkins. I call him CP. Right he was our him. last year's shooter of the year and known pro. And last round they shot 10, 14, Does not have a win yet. This year. Well He's looking exposed. for it. Available. There's Jeff Rainey, right. the panda, who is our leader. The panda, Jeff Rainey. Oh, he just discovered that's his. Yep. Uh, his buddy Remington Boyer let me know that that's his nickname, <laughs> the panda. Jeff he Rainey with 14 points. 466. That's going to move to. All right. Curtis Next Broadnax. up, Curtis Broadnax. Boy, that's, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's 12 okay. points. So talk about that's an interesting 12. spot. Yeah, that's right where it meets. You can see that yep. point where the 12 meets that 10. So if it's inside Very that point right play. there, you get the higher score. You that's definitely score. a connector score for a 12. Kyle interesting play for Curtis also right there. That target is how far again? In. Uh, that one is the, the hyena. He's 41.8. Okay, he wasn't ready to shoot that 14, but you can't play safe here. And the survey Kyle says Douglas on the shortest 14. target, 27 yard turkey. Oh. He's going to go to 464. Yep. And Curtis may be strategizing right. there. Let's Step 12 the hyena, get started, and he's going to this turkey next for him. He's probably going to shoot at the 14. Kind of magic he has. 
Stefan shot the long deer, oh, called yeah. upper, and he just going to miss it just a hair left for, the upper 12, for, a, 10. for a 10. That's a good shot. Stephan. 460. When guys Stephans are from Denmark, mm -hmm. she knows, but he loves this ASA game. There's a World Cup this weekend, but he said he loves the ASA. Yep. And Mr. Chris Perkins, you can see there, yep. 14 points. That is four, six, four. So he's only two points behind Rainey now, which they tied with those 14s. The spread's still two between those two. Christopher, you're going to see shooting Next. a yellow bow. That He won a ton of tournaments but had not been shooting it. He brought it back out right, this we'll weekend. <laughs> in that round. Seems Let's like it was the right move. And now he's in contention. That bow treats him well. We got Kyle Douglas at be interesting to see. I want to see what Jeff does here. We Rainey's got the lead, still holding it with 466. He's going to a 41-point-ish target, 41.8. So let's just say 42 yards. Do you shoot it to 14 and try to keep going, or do you just shoot a 12 there and hope to not make a mistake? That's his big dilemma right now. Yeah. Leads are hard to hang on to. Good look at Curtis there, South Paul from Social Circle, right. Georgia. Chris, There's Kyle Douglas, three-time indoor national champion, Vegas champion, right, we'll Reading champion. Minute. He's won a bunch. Every tournament Kyle goes to, now, he can win it. He won our last tournament yep. in London, Kentucky. There's the leader, Jeff Rainey. Chris Perkins coming to full draw. There's that. a good look at Kyle Douglas. Yeah. You'll watch his thumb come around to that trigger and when his pin get where it gets where, there you go. He just finishes that shot off. He did call upper. And he smashed it. Got it. Kirky, Curtis, whoever shot that's that, Curtis. got the 14. Mm -hmm. These guys aren't Perkins letting us down. Looking hard. 14 we rings everywhere. Or bonus rings everywhere. Perkins. I'm sure went to a 14 on that odd day. And I believe he smashed. Oh, yeah. Yep. He's putting the pressure on. He's so on. excited about these 14s, he can't stand it. Perkins, 14 points, 478. All right. He's one of those Chris guys, Perkins, too. When he starts hitting stuff, man, his confidence 14. goes mm -hmm. through the roof. These targets have been pounded tonight. <laughs> they really have. This has been some great shoot off, some great archery action. All the holes are in the bonus rings. Good look at Jeff. Jeff's from Kansas. Oh, and he did shoot it inside out. Bravo, Rainey. 480. No one's going to want to buy these targets. Wow, big, big move right there. He said he's been feeling good this weekend. Good for him. Yeah, just the 14 rings. Phone, Just a 14, no like problem. Tyrell says. Actually, these things were worth a lot of money. So now we come over to Curtis Broadnax on the turkey. Times the it looked like he got it. People. It's crazy to think Amazing. that if you don't shoot a 14, you're falling when behind you every target. Yeah. target. It's just crazy. For Curtis Broadnax. Yep, there That's it is. 14 points. Four, huh. seven, six. Oh, yeah, Big time, we call <laughs> Curtis there. <laughs> He's shooting good, too. Yep. Big smile on his face. There's his dad right behind him. They don't look anything alike, do they? Not at all. <laughs> all right, next up, Kyle Douglas. Kyle Douglas called up her, got the upper. Four points, four, seven, six. Back to back 14s for Jeff. He actually extended his lead. He's got a four point lead now. And now, Stefan on the wolf here. Stefan Hansen. Ah, just That's going to be an eight. That's a big swing. Four, six, eight. So he's 12 points behind Jeff Rainey right now. That's how quick it changes. And Jeff is going to the turkey, which is. 27.2. He just 14 to 42 yarder. Guess what he's going to do on a 27 yarder? Yeah. This is a no brainer. Perkins goes to the hyena, which, from what we've seen, right. they can That's see that one pretty good. Yeah, out. it's marked really well. Jeff donutted it. You can see Curtis there winding on his sight. He's moving that scope up up or down to get to where he wants the position, making sure his needle's right. in the exact Waiting perfect spot. Going to go. glass and find out where he wants the arrow to land and do his best to put it there. Get your spotter. There you go. We've got All Jeff right. Rainey in the lead, Gentlemen, Chris we'll Perkins, 478, now. Kyle Douglas Curtis at 476, and Stefan Hansen, 472. There's Rainey. Uh -huh. The leader. 
That's Ooh. smashed, I believe. I believe he's got it at 8 o'clock. Curtis looking nice and steady there. And he's going to take I an 8 on that long deer. It. I believe it's going to be just under the 12. That'll be a big arrow for Curtis right there, too. There's a look at Kyle Douglas on the 33 and a half yard. And Kurt, uh, Kyle right. got another 14. Wow. Big arrow for everybody Let's right start here. here with right. Hanson. He gets That's a 14. 14. Can anybody do anything but a 14? Let's 482. Nope. Nope. 14. Say That's people awesome. aren't even cheering <laughs> for 14s anymore. Uh, I think they expect them to hit it because they know, but they still got to make that shot. Yeah. It's still yeah. great yeah. shooting. Yes. That's a hard crowd to run in. Perkins. Oh, Perkins, he got it. Man, oh, man. Chris is feeling Three in a row. Four, nine, two. All right, Chris. That's three and Chris is coming up next to the short turkey. Mm -hmm. And Jeff's going to the long deer, so yeah. they both still have to shoot the long deer. I think he got it. I, think, uh, I can't tell. I think it's through the line at 8 o'clock yeah, there. The I'm pretty sure that's a 14, a it looks like it. That's the farthest he's missed today. the center, Yeah, but it's 14 points. It's yeah, oh you yeah. can see it yep, good yep, there. Yep, yep. 494. Three in a row for Jeff, three in a row for Perkins. Bravo, boys. Yeah. That's great shooting. Put like a, a three-quarter inch circle on the nose. Of his we hadn't seat. seen that much in this class in the earlier tournaments. Right. They were we kind of in and out and mm -hmm. weren't really, and but this one they had no choice. Yeah. You have to do it. And you know, out when everybody in front and behind you is hitting 14s, you have no choice. Have no choice. They're forcing your hand. Let's see what this call goes here. That It's got to be just a hair yeah. low, I think. <laughs> it's close. Wow. It's an eight. eight. Curtis. Mm -hmm. 484. So now he's 10 points behind Jeff. Six point swing. Uh, you can't survive very many of them. Kyle, he's going to bump right up there. 14 for Kyle. Put him at a 490. Curtis, uh, 12, a 14, and 8, and now he's 10 points. With three now. arrows to go. Okay. Wow. Kyle Douglas, 14. I don't Here think I've goes. ever seen anyone shoot five 14s, but I really would have to have a sanity check on them. If they shoot at the 14 on this deer right now, so yes, 14, 12, 14, they would have to go s have a psych oh exam. Boy, it's kind of, unless Rainey Jeff hits Rainey's it, it's kind of advantage 14, Perkins because 14, 14, he can see what Jeff does, mm -hmm. 14, 14, 14, 14, you know, whether he has to go for it or not. Yeah. It's 47.2 yards, and the shadow's starting to cover that deer now, so it's not as prominent. I mean, they're going to be able to see it because of the core line there, but I just don't think... One, two, three, four, five, I don't six, think seven, you. Eight, I don't nine, think you risk your tournament 10, right now. I think you try to 12 it. I think. All right. Yeah. I'm not going to say 14 anymore the rest of the night, but shoot on, guys. There's Mr. Perkins. He's going to shoot it to 14. This is 27 Ready? yards. Yeah. Yeah. If he can, if he can see, which I'm sure he Ready? can see. We'll These guys all have now. lenses on their scopes. You can see their scopes there on their side. They might be shooting a clarifier some type of an aperture in that peep that they're looking through there by their eye, but it blows that target up. So they've got some magnification in there. They can see good detail on these targets. He oh, said, said yep. yep. Yep, he yep, hit it the is. same hole rain he did. Hey, let's not forget, they're also young. They can just see better Yes. <laughs> yeah, average age is not very high. Up. Look at that. That is Kyle Douglas with another 14. This is so good. I don't know that anybody's ever hit five 14s in a row. Perkins just had hit four. Wow. And we don't know what Rainey shot. He may have four. All right. But there's Kyle Douglas. Kyle Douglas, 14. 14. 4 If you get over 500 points at an ASA, you've shot your butt off on the weekend. With one target in regulation to go. Yes. There's a good look at Stefan. He didn't, like that he didn't like where it landed. No. He's such a good shooter. Oh, he's straight low he for an eight. Chris Perkins. That's going to hurt. 490 for 490. Stapon. 14, 14, so we come around 14, to Christopher. He's currently 14 points behind Kyle, so he's, he's running out of targets to make a move. He may not get to shoot that final arrow. We're going to see a 506 here. 14. Chris Perkins. Christopher Perkins, four in a row. 
Uh, does he go for five? I don't think anybody's oh, ever hit five in a row out here. And and it looks like Jeff's just got a ten, so I don't Let's think I don't think Chris would poke. risk it unless he's really feeling Center frisky. Ten. Yep. ten for Jeff. Five oh four. So Jeff and Kyle are tied. Ten. Perkins has a two point lead right now. Rainey's gonna shoot at the fourteen over on the yeah. wolf. After after 20 arrows, Kyle finishes on the time. hyena, so he's probably going to shoot at it. Golly, can Perkins to see that 12? I can't do all the math quick enough for everybody. Right, and Figure for out what the Broadnax. scenarios 14 are. 14 for per, uh, Broadnecks. So that's a 498. 498. Wow. Curtis is coming around to the odd right. He's going to shoot at a 14. Rainey's going to the wolf. He's going to shoot at 14. Kyle's going to the hyena. He's going to shoot at 14. Stefan has no choice. He's going to shoot the turkey and shoot a 14. And then Perkins is on the 47.2 yard deer. I think he 12 it. I think he has to 12 it. A 12 by him and a 14 by Rainey. And then they're tied. Yep. Um, and Perkins, if he hits a 12. He will actually tie right, Jeff Rainey on bonus rings because he came in one this, bonus ring behind Jeff Rainey. Mm -hmm. And, and Jeff just shot a 10. Big That's arrow right here for all these guys. Are you ready? They got to be within 10 points of the leader to we'll get shoot the final, the sixth now. and potentially final arrow. Yep. We don't even know that yet. Good look at big time right there. Old lefty. Old lefty. Rainey's arrow is gone. That fast. He shot the 14. What's Perkins do? He said, yep. He said, oh, oh, just die for So he 10. called the upper and he got a 10. So Jeff's going to take a two point lead back right there. Up, yeah. All right, let's see how this shakes out. Yeah, we can't see. I, I can't believe he would have missed it. Oh, oh yeah, he got it. it. Yep, he yep, smoked yep. it. All right, Curtis. start with Curtis, I believe. Yeah. Curly on the hot dad. 30 bonus rings, and he trails by eight just Oh. It's, uh, can't see right for the shade. There. There's the sunlight. That's got to be an eight just out. low. You can see just a touch of meat Curtis. between that one. I think it's an eight. Here he comes with the call. Eight for Curtis. Yep. Yep. <laughs> eight. That's going to hurt. That's a 506 for Curtis. Kyle Douglas. Kyle Douglas. <sighs> I'm going to think he shot a 14. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to guess. Oh, he missed. An 8 for Kyle. So 5 12. So this is a Perkins and Rainey race here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Stefan, 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 Stefan shot at the I, 14, and I believe. I asked him one time how he pronounces his Stephen first name, and he said Stefan. Stefan. Gosh, what, well, is, that what is that? It's at least a 10. Yeah. But is it a 14? He hit right between the two. Interesting. So, Darren, you're out on the range, and the ring is blown up like that. You do your best judgment to connect it visually to try to reconnect that line 14, 14, yeah, 14 says Don points because yeah. Yeah. you can't really poke around on the target or anything you have to call it where it lies out. there 14 it's been so that's 504 yeah. and and what these judges are doing are All right. Chris they're Burton giving everything to the archer it's, yeah. is there yeah. clear evidence that it's not in so yeah, it's right that's yeah. right Called an upper, but that's zero. kind of a rough line there. But I think that's just yeah, low. I believe my so. opinion. Going to be a ten. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a ten. Five, sixteen. So Hanson is twelve points behind Chris, so he now won't Jeff make the final final arrow. Let's see. So far, Rainey's got a fourteen, so he's going to be at a five six. So they're tied. Is that right? No, we go to five eighteen. No, he's going to go eighteen. See what happens. Five, eight, 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 we'll Rainey bump scores, Curtis Broadnecks out. Jeff Rainey. Yep. So you have to be a 508 or better to be in the final shoot off. It's going to be Kyle Douglas first, Christopher Perkins second, and then Jeff Rainey will be the third shooter to see who's going to win this. 
Wow. Stefan gets fifth. Curtis is going to get fourth. First, second, third's up for grabs. I am going to guess here that Scott Parrott is going to make these guys earn this last one. Yeah. I bet they're shooting max distance. I, this is going to be probably a 48 or 49-yard target, I'm guessing. Well, we know from the shooting line to the deer is 47-2. Right. So let's see what he does with this target. Putting it over the hill is no disadvantage. Yeah. These guys are going to know they the distance. Know so trying to trick them by hiding some of the target. He is behind. If I can get Scott's attention, I'm going to try and get him to tell us how far this is. Yeah, definitely put it in a difficult spot for him to judge. I would say 46 right there would be my best guess. He's a yard in front of the shooting line. Looks like it's it. a little closer down there. Could be five. No, he moved the stake back a little bit. Pretty good poke. Scott Parrott's going down range. I'm not going to be able to get his attention. So. Pretty good view behind Ken right there. We'll just see what happens. Kyle Douglas is at 5'12". He's going to shoot first. Kyle's going to shoot at the 14. Right, going into this round, Jeff Brady Chris shot Perkins four is at 5'16". He's going to shoot Chris second. Shot four and then the panda, ten. Mr. Jeff Rainey, is going to decide what he needs to do to win this eight. thing. Yeah, Both so rings. let's see. If Kyle Both shoots a 14, All right, we're you no Chris would need judge. at least a 10 mm -hmm. to tie, but he would take it on bonus rings. Yep. Let's so, at this point, I don't think they aim at anything in the tin ring. No. I don't Wondering. think. I don't know. Again, I, it's. I was going to say, I, just knowing Chris, I think he's going 14 no matter what. All right. I believe Kyle does here. He has yeah. to hit he a 14 has, to force. No yeah, he has yeah. no choice. We'll start your one minute. If he shoots a 14, he goes to 526. If Jeff would to shoot an 8, that would put him at 26. So yeah. if Kyle 14's this, these guys have to now. have to hit a bonus ring or at least a 10 yeah. to jump back in front. You'll see Kyle. He won't waste much time. He's going to get to full draw. He's going to start aiming. You'll watch that thumb come around. When that pin gets where he wants it, see you later. Oh, That's so man, close. That is close. That's super close. Oh, Let's see if man. we get a good camera look on this one. Darren from far away. Right, I'm going to guess yes. Five, oh, oh, yeah. That's got it. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. 14. Good shot, High Kyle five. Douglas. 5 2 6. Right. Shoo. So, if Christopher were to hit a 10, he would, t he would take. Uh, mm -hmm. He would move ahead of Kyle based on bonus rings, even though they'd both be at 526. But Chris isn't shooting at it. No. He's not shooting at that 12. A, I, a 14 gives him 530, yeah. puts him four points above Kyle, which forces Jeff to shoot a 12 to tie or 14 to win. So big arrow right here. He's ready. That's a confident head nod right there. Yes, it is. As soon as he shoots it. Yep. Nope. He, he said, said yep. yep. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that means the shot fired while the pin was yes. sitting on the 14, and he's like, yep, he that's knows good. It. That's right. awesome. 530. 530. Oh, Jeff Rainey. 14. Has Just to hit a 12. That's and awesome. So, bonus let's see. All right, Jeff. You need a 12 to win and a 14 just to please the crowd. It's up to you. Oh, a 12 so to win. So he said a 12 wins it. Because he's got him on bonus rings then. He must have him. I thought. You 12, you can put so what do you do? Is the 14 you bigger? Is it easier to aim at? Or can you oh, aim more comfortably at that 12? I thought they were tied on bonus rings, but Mike Tyrell told him a 12 and he wins. So with right. contingency, this right here. The difference between first and second right, is yeah. going to be, see, first place, I'm going to guess, is going to be around thirteen or $14,000. Yeah. 
second place is probably going to be about six or seven. Six or seven. So yeah. this is at least a seven thousand dollar arrow. I mean, he's been confident all weekend. He called upper twelve. So. Yes. Oh. I did hear he go, hit. baby, go. He so he got it. it. Sealed the deal. Wow, great shot, Jeff Rainey. There's Don Bailey with the call. 530, and he wins on bonus rings. That's crazy good. Now wait, the guys are looking around. No? They're looking around. They're wondering about bonus rings. Bonus rings. Chris Perkins, 530 and 31 bonus rings. There we ah, there go. It is. We got yep. clarification. We just got it. He won Jeff by one bonus by ring. One. Yep. One bonus ring. Okay. Wow. Darren Christian. That's Barry. awesome. We were wondering, man, what are these guys going to do? And that was a clinic a, on 14. That was crazy good. <laughs> Jeff only missed one ring out there. I think he shot a 10 on that deer. On the deer, yeah. And he hit four 14s and then a 12 to win it right there. That's awesome. Man. This is only his second win in he, the known pro class. He so. won the classic last year yeah. in August of 2021. Yes. And he's back on top of the so podium. That, that is a big win. He's making his way over to the headset. And Jeff, oh, there he is, Jeff Rainey. Wow, what a clinic on bonus rings there. How are you feeling? <laughs> oh, I'm feeling great, man. It, I couldn't have wrote it up any better. Um, the only one I missed was Long Doe. Made a great shot, just aimed a little low on it. And, man, it was just everything was flowing out there. You had to have been shooting with severe confidence with all these guys hitting bonus rings. What's your confidence level out there, especially on that last target? You know, I always have confidence in myself. But, man, these guys have pushed me to, to have to shoot that way. You know, when they're hitting 14s and stuff, you know, you you just got to be aggressive to win in this class at this point with the talent level. You said you'd be good with it. I let the cat out of the bag a minute ago, too. Your new nickname is officially the Panda while you're out there. So <laughs> it's going to stick. It's going to stick. <laughs> yeah, everyone, all my friends call me that. It's just, it's a little joke. It's, but I guess it ain't now. <laughs> it's for real. The Panda is back on top. Jeff, awesome shooting out there. You only missed one ring. Congrats on being back on top of the podium. That was a great show. I appreciate it, Darren. Thank you. Great weekend, Jeff Rainey. All right, folks, that is going to do it for the known pro division as well as the whole tournament here, the Pro Pressure Point shootdowns from the Matthews Pro-Am. For Darren Christianberry and Nathan Brooks, I am PJ Riley signing off from Fort Massac. Join us at the end of July for the ASA Classic. Thanks for joining us this weekend.